It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Alex Lindsay's back along with Andy Anako and Renee Ritchie. We'll talk about the latest rumors. In fact, apparently somebody's put out the roadmap for Apple's product releases in 2013. And we'll look ahead to Apple's big quarterly earnings report for tomorrow. It's all ahead on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 334, recorded January 22nd, 2013. Kobe Beef Bandwidth. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash MacBreak. And by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell last year's gadgets. Find out what your used iPad, MacBook, iPhone, Galaxy S, or other smartphone is worth at Gazelle.com. And by Landtronics, maker of the X-Print server. Print from your iPad, iPhone, or any iOS device to virtually any printer. For more information, visit xprintserver.com slash twit and enter the code twit to receive free shipping on your order. It's time for this, uh, what else the hell the name of this show is? Mac Break <laughs> Weekly, This Week in Mac. Why do I, I wanted to call it that? I don't know why. I don't know why. It's Mac, oh, I know why, because the old timer's here. The man who <laughs> named Mac Break Weekly, Mr. Alex Lindsay from the Pixel Core. Hi, Alex. How's it going? You are so rarely in town now. I am, but I'm back. And we're gr and we're grateful for you. Maybe even the next couple. Weeks. Some say though. Some say that perhaps you know we named Mac. When it was the first Mac break? It was in two thousand six. In two thousand six. That was January. So I think back it was then, it, there was no iPhone. There was no iOS. It was Mac. It really was break weekly. Now it really should be. I don't know. iOS weekly. iOS. <laughs> I don't bit, know. Because Mac breaks is easier. I, we we we've talked about changing the name no, for a couple of years. No, no, no. You can't but, change. But the, the problem is, is that we can't think of something that would be better. You can't change the name. Right. <laughs> Also with us, Renee Ritchie from iMore.com up in Montreal. Hello, Renee. Hi, Leo. How are you? He was up late re-recording his show last night. Again and I, again. It's this Apple stuff, Leo. I'm doomed, but I'm selling more than ever, and I don't know how to reconcile <laughs> those two facts. <laughs> doomed! <laughs> yeah, well, let's talk about Apple being doomed. Also, Andy Anako's here. It was so nice to have you on Twit on Sunday. Everybody should listen. You're fabulous. Thank you very much. You're quite fabulous yourself, Leo. And for those watching on video, Andy sounds great, but for those watching on video, that beautiful Minecraft edition of Andy hey, Anako. Andy. <laughs> Andy Anako, the Lego edition. This is the last time you will see it. Oh, really? Well, or or or, or at least if it's, if we see this next week, then we can definitely uh, we can definitely start blaming Skype and Verizon again. Because uh, the t tomorrow uh, my up my uplink goes from about f uh, three to four megabits to twenty five. So Whoa! What'd you get? FiOS, FiOS Superman level uh, <laughs> bandwidth, and uh, there is actually even one level higher than that. If if uh, if, if I decide it. to really be arrogant about bandwidth, I don't think Skype so uses more than twenty megabits up per second. Yeah, it seems like a, that would be more than it would need. The thing, I mean, the, 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 the thing is, I got I got the best that was available when I first set up my servers a few years ago, so it was certainly long past time for me to revisit that anyway. But now, but at this point, it's like, okay, if it's not, it, if if uh, I still have a problem next week, it's definitely Skype. It's definitely no, it, something specific to my bandwidth. service. Yeah, or yes, or it's, or just that I I count amongst God's unbeloved. Although you know, uh, Steve Gibson has a lot of bandwidth because uh, he has like a direct connection, a spigot, <laughs> if you will, to the uh, backbone. But because he has all this stuff going on, he mm -hmm. often has problems because he's conditioning it and massaging it. Yeah, it's like the Kobe beef of bandwidth. It's like <laughs> <laughs> so. So he's so he's he's he he, he he battery farms his bandwidth, force feeds it yeah. more grain than could possibly consume, and then kills Beer it while it's young. Yeah, something like that. And it's it's actually capable of a very good connection. I mean, we, you see, like when I'm at one, at those events and I and I hooks. You probably know more about in. this than anything else. You're streaming all the time from all sorts of crazy places. Yeah, I mean, we we do a lot of two way communication, and and I mean, the big thing is is making sure that there is nothing between you and the internet. You right. Know, so so that's the key, you know, so and that's what's the problem with no Steve. firewall. No, yeah. no, you know. So like when we you know we'll let 
we'll go into businesses all the time and say, well, we need you to punch a hole. You know, we, we need you to build a VLAN that punches a hole through your firewall just for this one port. Right. <laughs> you know, like, you know, you just right. plug this in and this doesn't touch anything else until right. it hits the internet. Um, you know, or you put in a box that lets you, um, yeah, control, yeah. basically prioritize what we call prioritize the packets and decide, you know, from this port, when someone plugs into here, they get all the bandwidth and everything else has to, everybody else has to share whatever's left, you know, and that's the, those are some, some, some of the stuff that, it's kind of my day to day. That that must that must be part of the fun of being Alex Lindsay, like showing up and then someone says, "Oh, don't worry, the hotel promised us they have Wi-Fi <laughs> oh. everywhere." How how often so, have I heard that? Yeah. So in in um in uh just as an example for CES, we um almost bullied the high what used to be the high the 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 um the whatever the Las Vegas hotel LVH. They don't call them the. Hilton there was like anymore. two days of bullying Hilton. to talk to them to, to make to make to make sure that we actually got the bandwidth that we asked, and then we still didn't trust them, so we microwaved another ten megs um, to the window, um, you know, from from another building in Las Vegas. And so, um, so anyway, that was the. Uh, but that's yeah. did you microwave it? We, yeah, we microwaved it. Look, wow. Put a little receiver at the window because yeah, I remember you told me what you had a, like a, <laughs> we had, a I had one connection bits or something no 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 we only had we had 10 up and down to the window and then we had to the like window. Um, 10 to the window yeah 10 to the window <laughs> and this um, looks like this looks like something out of like Ocean's 14 where like Don <laughs> Cheadle <laughs> Don Cheadle like rents like a, op opens a McDonald's like across the street just so they could aim a beam <laughs> <laughs> well I gotta tell you I, I, I'd like to say that, that that's been the hardest connection we've had it's just not <laughs> you amazing. know so that that's actually a pretty straightforward uh, we work with a company called Straight Up Technologies they do most of that for us. They're, they're kind of our... our uh, That's our a black guys. art. Anybody who's an expert on bandwidth art... It's like RF, uh, radio frequency. It's the same thing. I mean, anything, anybody's an expert in these things. Because it's not it's not deterministic. Or it probably is, but we just... They're so chaotic. There's so many variables. You can't see the, you know, the causality of stuff. Right. You just have to kind of... You kind of sense it. There's a lot of... Intu it's, you right. might as well have a dowser with a, well, with and, a and, hickory and stick. And you just have to know that it's there are so many I things that I sense bandwidth... Wrong. Here it is. Yeah. Well, and we're just. Yeah, I heard them underload by Cracky. Big here. I'm going to shoot them. Son of a piece is going to jump my bandwidth claim. <laughs> well, and, and all of us are walking around. Like, all of us are constantly, every city we go into, every place we go, we're constantly checking bandwidth. Like, what is the bandwidth like here? What's the LTE? What's the LTE? Like, and, and it comes up in the weirdest places. Like, we were in, I was in Tahoe over the weekend, and uh, the apartment, the, the apartment that we got there, it's like twenty down and ten up. I was like, I could do an I could Verizon? do a podcast from here. Verizon LTE? Uh, no, that that was the oh the Verizon LTE was like eight eight or eight uh, up and down. But you the, mean this, this was this is the, the Wi Fi that's at the wild. Hyatt or whatever, yeah, and it was wild. um. But that's because nobody was there yet or something or I, I, everybody I was guess, skiing. Yeah, it was, but we were downloading movies and it wow. was but but the um uh <laughs> uh. But anyway, but it's just interesting. So we're constantly obsessed. That's the one thing that we're obsessed with constantly because it is the hardest thing to sort out. Obsessed with bandwidth, and it's all about pace. Have you heard of pace? What's that? Primary. New York City. You have your primary, your <laughs> that's alternate. Pace. That's taco sauce. <laughs> that it's sauce is made in New York City. It's Taco Tuesday. It's on my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, now, does anyone? Does what anyone? Does pace stand for? Pay, does anyone on the on, on in the chat know what pace oh, is? Oh, I bet. I bet somebody does. Primary, alternate. Um, uh, your um, so your primary, alternate. I bet if I look on the internet, emergency. It's primary a professional association for childhood no. education. Primary, alternate, <laughs> contingency, emergencies. You have four Ooh. ways that's going to get done every single time, and almost every event we have has. Um, I like uh, that. Have that. Primary, alternate, contingency. Contingency would be like the third one down. Emergency. An emergency would be like. Ooh. If it, you know, and so for instance, emergency on our on our end is typically a. LTE modem hooked to our laptop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's yeah, like that's, the, that's, like, that's like we don't want to use it, but we always show up with one. You know, I have I usually have Verizon and AT and T uh, modems that I have. Right. You know, UPS. All chain. Here at here at Twit, we use PA. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we barely put. <laughs> barely. Mostly, puh. our bandwidth's P pretty much, <laughs> and then maybe a little ah. Uh. Uh. Contingency. Yes, emergency is they go over to my house. Yeah, and we that's have, the emergency. And we we have do the whole show from my living room. We have some cell phones, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay. What is our pace? We should think of our pace. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> but the, the reason we're stalling is because Apple's quarterly uh, earnings call is tomorrow. So we're going to keep on talking like this until tomorrow. If we can get to tomorrow, um, there'll be some news. Yeah. Well, let's say now. I I was I, I was going to interrupt earlier on because we were, we were talking about names for the show, 
Uh, and of course, I've got like I've, I've got my like Mac Mini like with just a dedicated Twitter feed next to me right here. And there's already a couple of suggestions. <laughs> I hope it's not another Mac bleep weekly with a word, rude word on it about how we say nasty things about uh, about Apple and, and 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 Mac every week. So for, so maybe we don't we say find, nasty things. We, don't, we, say, we say we say critical things because so because sometimes because it's know, not we, a we fan like, show. If you like, want a fan show, there are plenty of Mac Apple fan shows this is a news and show also, and also we're not your performing monkey sir we're not here to <laughs> yeah. validate your decisions in life we will right. not dance but for you yes. but, but 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 perhaps we can start off by saying that is there is there any announcement that could happen tomorrow that would change the fact that apple is doing extremely well and is probably going to be doing extremely well for the next two or three years is there, well is there any is there anything that's going to that's going to make us think that ooh, i think i should start looking at windows 8 for real now <laughs> No, I can no, guarantee you is. not on that. No, there is. But uh, but but of course, what everybody's wondering, you know, and and obviously the stock market is weighed in. We talked about this on Sunday with, with a two hundred dollar price drop, which is significant uh, over the last few months. What everybody's wondering is is Apple kind of out of runway, and uh, are they now going to be facing a normal market environment where there's a lot of real competition instead of just owning? I mean, they've been so dominant. Uh, and they've really owned everything. It's not a question of, is Apple going to go out of business tomorrow? It's not a question. But it might be a question of, is Apple going to look more like the post-Steve Jobs era the first time uh, than it does now? And the only advantage they have now is that post-Steve Jobs, except that uh, they have $120 billion. So, I mean, the question is, is that are they just going to burn that out? I mean, Microsoft had a huge still has a huge amount. I mean, Microsoft can run for the next century, just yeah, not doing like, anything. Look at Microsoft, the question is, does Apple stay relevant in the way let, that they're leading me, the industry? Let me say in a way that Apple fans will uh, not get mad. M look at Microsoft. Here's a company that has really struggled. Their stock price is flat at like nothing. Right. Uh, and it has not been able to break out, but it's right. not out of business. It's right. not going away. It's still the dominant operating system by far. So you can coast for a long time, but that's not what we're talking about. But what we really are saying is Apple fanatics is people who really care about Apple wither Apple. And, well, and I, think got, the, I think to answer your question, Andy, and then I'll let you talk. Yep. To answer your question, part of the problem with this tomorrow's results is they don't reflect the whole holiday season, right? What do they, what do they, what do they reflect? Through October, November, December? I think they do. So I believe it's the holiday quarter. It's it is the holiday one quarter. Shorter than it was last year, but it's still the holiday yeah. quarter. But it won't. But uh, you know, I mean, they came out with the iPhone five late in that. You know, it was it was it, in that September. within that quarter, right? Or just just around that quarter. Um, we did see we did get Verizon's results today though, and they sold nine point eight million smartphones in their Q four, and six point two million of them were iPhones. So three out of every five phones they sold were smartphones they sold were iPhones. And this is when Apple is doomed. So I'm guessing if Apple wasn't doomed, it would have been six out of five. <laughs> well now wait a minute. Are you sure it's it's it says almost according to the Mashable article, almost half of its activations were iPhones. Sixty three five. Oh I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sixty three percent. Okay. Uh, and that's the rest were mostly Android phones, a small mix right. of Windows phones and maybe a BlackBerry. So that's good. That's an yeah, that's an early indicator. Uh, and there was, I mean, I think there's there's three areas that we typically look at Apple in. One is market share, which they've never done well at. You know, they were never the market share leader with the Mac. Uh, when they first introduced the iPhone, Nokia and BlackBerry were massive. And, you know, Steve Jobs said we'd be happy with a few percentage points. And now Android is massive. Profit share, Apple has never had a problem with. They're always hugely, pro under the Jobs 2 era, they've always been hugely profitable. But mind share is something that they grabbed a lot of when the iPhone launched. And that is something that seems more vulnerable now. It's the not necessarily the financials, but the coolness factor and the sort of aura that Apple has that attracted a lot of people over the last few years now is maybe fragmenting between more players. So I, I don't think anybody here would say Apple is doomed. The no, only question is, well, is Apple on, its, on the upswing, the downswing, or hovering well and i think that i think that one of the things that we saw i mean and some people had talked about it uh, i'm sure we talked about it here too but the a lot of the end of the year stock drop i think a lot of people are saying oh apple's stock is going down and a lot of that had to do with had as much to do with tax policy in the united states as it did with um, anything that people thought about apple a lot of people had huge positions in apple and they're afraid of where the taxes they're are going in the united out. states yeah. and so that what they want to do is lock some of that uh, profit in before they have to pay more taxes on it this year than they would have last year 
there. Um, it's profit taking. And, and so there's a lot of profit taking there. Um, and so and, and and I think that they probably see that Apple, if anything, is going to slow down a little bit as far as the, I mean, because they were astronomical for a while. And even in, when you look at the the stock uh, rise over the last year, I believe the even with <laughs> Apple, quote unquote, losing hundreds of points or whatever. I think it's about where it was at the beginning of the year. Uh, is it? Yeah, yeah. So the oh no, that's that's this year. Yeah, the beginning of this year. Oh, oh, what oh. I'm saying, if you look over the over the last twelve months, I believe it's up by still twenty or thirty percent at least. Um, so okay, I wonder. You know, let yeah, me get so, this. Uh, let me get this. Uh, yeah. So Google anyway, so then, cause find out when the last time Apple was at five hundred. Right, that so, would be of interest. Wouldn't so it? anyway, so I think that you know while it dropped, I think that there is um, there was a fairly good growth over the. Um, uh, anyway, so there was a fairly good growth over the last year, um, you know, year to year. I mean, healthy for a company that is one of the largest in the world from a market cap perspective. It's a very very aggressive growth rate. On this day in nine in twenty twelve, mm -hmm. they were at four hundred twenty seven. Right, so you're looking at a twenty percent. Approxim a little less right. than 20% growth. Right. So that's not still <laughs> for a company that is the largest, uh, one of the largest companies. That's, that's an extremely, most of these companies, you know, measure their growth in, you know, single, single digits. But it's not just the stock price, although it's partly, and maybe the stock price is influenced by the stories that iPhone five, uh, orders are down from the suppliers, that the Sharp has stopped making iPad screens. I mean, we're hearing stories out of China that I, Apple's ordering less product. So that's right. That's also where this comes from. And some of that, the question really around that is, is are there adjustments being made? You know, for instance... Well, the, and what did, know, maybe they over... Maybe they predicted huge sales and they're only going to have giant sales. Exactly. Well, and also the the shift from the, the, the full-sized, uh, uh, you know, iPad to the, the iPad mini. I mean, I barely use my full-size iPad anymore. So I think that there's a lot of people that have made that choice, you know, and I think that that was, and I'm sure that Apple knew that that was going to be successful. The question is whether they knew it was going to be as successful as they, um, as they, as, as it has been. So I think that that, and that'll be really interesting to see that what numbers they give us uh, related to iPad mini sales over this last quarter. Uh, that's something I'm going to be really fascinated to see, you know, how the well, mini it, how clearly well it to me is the, is the iPad of choice, right? Yeah, we agree. Yeah. I mean, obviously all of us, all of us agree that it would be great to have a retina. <laughs> well, yeah, what would, so here's the big question though. If the iPad mini goes retina or if the big iPad gets a casing as thin and small and light, as the iPad mini, then it's it's blurrier again because you have a 9.7 inch screen that's very small, very tiny, very portable, and a 7.9 inch screen that's suddenly very good. And then those products become more competitive, I think. I don't, I don't think it becomes blurry at all. I, I think that people are really very, very clear on the difference between a device like this, which is sort of a notebook replacement, and a device like this, which is very much like a media device. Uh, the fact that so many people, again, Alex, you must, I, I think that if I were to even uh, play back all my video and audio recorded secretly logs of all conversations I ever have with all my friends and, and family members, I think it would be almost 100% the people who are regular 9.7-inch uh, iPad users who then got an iPad mini who almost never use the, the full-size version anymore. So I, th I really do think that this was just the, the, a, a, any smaller size tablet, anything that you can hold in one hand without being an NBA player, anything that you can conceivably stick in some pocket of some piece of clothing that you actually have that's not designed specifically uh, for, for shoplifting purposes, I think that's a fundamentally different sort of thing. And I think that this is going to what, what I'm really looking forward to finding out tomorrow is if there's an indication of uh, is the iPad mini reaching out to people who were really, really on that fence before about the iPad or had dismissed the iPad before? Is it bringing new people into the fold, people that had rejected the larger one, but this was the mini was exactly the one that they wanted? So I think that we're going to get a lot of really interesting information about where, where the, what, what the, what the so-called normal size tablet is. I think that we're, we might find out that you know a 10-inch tablet is actually the big tablet. It's not the normal size tablet, and it's the smaller one that people are actually looking for. Yeah, the I, I you know I, I I find it fascinating that you know I'm, of course I have a lot of different tablets that I'm playing with, and but when it, when it, when my when my three year old daughter um, insists on the mini, <laughs> like I try to handle well, her, a full size one. Little baby no, no, she's just like she's like I don't I, I want I want your your tablet. You know you know she's like, she keeps. I want the good one. Yeah, if she like, says I want the good one, then that's different. so you know it's just she's you know so when you see at, at that age they're making they're making a quality decision have, about how they're you know what have I said this on this show? I've said it on every other show. I, I think Apple's next product. I predict I'm going to go out on a limb here. In March will be a iPhone, iPhone iPad Mini, a Mini iPhone, an iPod, an iPad I'm, Mini with iPhone built in. Did I say that I'm, yet? 
I, I, you, you said it on you said it, I said it on, on Twitter this weekend tech. Mm-hmm. I don't th- I don't I, I don't think that. you said it. I don't think you said it on uh, on this show. I'm not sure that I agree. I mean, if you're talking about this only with phone features, yes. Well, so I'm not really sure. Uh, 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 not for everybody. You can still have your crappy little iPhone 5, yeah, but, 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 but I Apple want doesn't, giant. Apple, does, Apple does, but Apple does, I, I want it too, but Apple doesn't work oh, that way. They're oh, you gonna, want it, but, not, you, but so Apple the, won't do it. Well, so, no, 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 I'm, I'm saying, I, I'm saying that the, uh, I'm a real big fan of, I mean, I've been no secret before. I mean, I'm a big fan of like the larger screen phones. I love this 4.8 inch screen. The Note 2, uh, I have one on loan that is tempting me to actually acquire one for real because I do think that Apple's missing the boat by creating phones that still have small screens on them. However, the idea of making this a discreet a, dis- a discreet phone product is going to be I-, I think it would be a really bold move for Apple to do. It would say that they it would say that they're no longer willing to only produce products that they absolutely 100% have faith in. They're now willing to say, we don't know whether people want a small phone, a large tablet, a small tablet, or a small phone tablet. So we're just going to make as many things as we can and let people pick. <laughs> Well, I, I, I do. I, I do think. I do think. I'm sorry. Just to, just to cap it off, mm-hmm. I do think that it's inevitable that Apple's going to move away from uh, the form factor they have for the iPhone 5. I do think they're going to have to move towards something that's closer to this, even if it's not like a huge Note 2 sort uh, sort of form factor. I do think they're going to make this bigger, the the iPhone bigger for real, instead of just making it longer. I, I think that from from a phone perspective, I think that, uh, and I, I wrote a lot of the, about this on a G Plus post that I put up. But the the I think that. What's missing for Apple right now when it comes to the phone is unifying the FaceTime uh, effect of being able to call someone. Like, I don't want to use FaceTime, but I do want to call them. And I, and I just want to use Wi-Fi or I just want to use my 3G or 4G. The thing is, I want to bypass all the minutes. I want to bypass. I just want it to be a data call. And I want to have well, that Well, you can do that call. right now with a mini. I mean, you don't need to anything special you can but it's not it's not just by like the way the, the, here's the thing the is cell just, carriers are moving in that direction too that's what lte is all about lte currently right. doesn't carry voice but that's the plan but, and then they're just a data network but what i don't understand right now like i guess for the the issue right now is that it's not as easy as with on app like if i dial somebody um with uh, if i dial someone else with an iphone or an ipad or if i want to call a computer a mac or whatever i want to have that be just something that is super simple and i don't want it to bring up a video screen you know, I don't, you know, I just want to dial the number and get them wherever, wherever they route it to, you know, in their dot Mac account or whatever, um, or all of them or whatever it is. But I want to be able to, the idea of calling a computer, an iPad or a phone to me should be completely seamless of, I want to contact that person. But right now it feels like it's all leaning towards video, you know, so it's all like, you know, the FaceTime mm. is the, the easy, I want to call that person. Boom. I don't, the thing right now is that, is that I just feel like it's, it's this onerous process, whereas I just dial their number and it just calls them via Wi-Fi. It's just, a, it's just a data call all the time. And the reason that that's important to me, of course, is that I spend a lot of time overseas. And so if I'm, if I have a data connection that I'm paying for, I don't want to have to pay for four, $4 a minute, you know, to make that go away. Yeah. Also, also I, th- I think that it's people want more flexibility. They don't really think about a telephone number for a person. They think of that person. Right. Exactly. Uh, and uh, I, I really That's, wish that iMessage worked the way that Apple kind of promised it would last year. Uh, because let's say that you, God forbid that you want to use iMessage on your iPhone sometimes, but on iDevices other times, and you don't necessarily want, you, you, you want a certain amount of clarity. You want to simply say, please direct all my iMessage, tra- iMessage traffic for whatever reason to this device and not all the rest of them. It becomes such a such a hoary mess uh, because I, I, I recently changed my data plan so that I can move my SIM from one device to another. Uh, so this this is something you would be, uh, not, not something that most people are, are dealing with, but if you move, let's say you switch away from the iPhone to something else, Let's say you decided that, hey, I really do like the Galaxy Note 2. Let's say I really, you really do like something else. Now iMessage gets confused as to when it should contact you via a text message. Or, excuse me, when, this, when someone should be sending something to you as a text message, when it should be sending to you as an iMessage. It's like, yikes, it should really figure that out a lot, lot easier. I should be able to go to a universal setting and say, hi, yes, anytime someone's trying to contact me via the iMessage service, if I'm, on, if I'm logged in and active onto this device, routed to this device, otherwise send it as a text message. And you know, this, by the way, is why. Not the stock price, not the whether or not they're ordering fewer iPads or iPhones, but this is to why me, I'm a little worried about Apple. I used to have that feeling that Apple will solve this. They're mm-hmm. going to do something great. I have no longer have any confidence at all that okay. Apple will be able to solve this problem and make something that we want to use. I just have <laughs> lost confidence in Apple. Not that anybody else out there is any better, 
I've in some ways lost confidence in the tech industry I think, as a whole. I think the it issue should come was, up with innovative, interesting solutions. It it used to be that Apple really did. You, you just was oh I never you know they thought about it better than we would. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, yes, they, they I were, used to have this they huge were respect. They were Apple ahead of us. You know, and, it's the great Steve will figure it out. Right. And you don't. You just at least I and maybe it's just me mm -hmm. don't have that feeling anymore. I think there was a ro there's a rosy glow effect when we look back over time. I mean, I remember things. Like people complain about skeuomorphism now, and I remember brush metal from brush the metal. That was they the were, first skeuomorphism. Yeah. Yeah, but there were things. It never worked, right? It never. But there, we had such an enormous. We had a great feeling towards it. We had a lot of confidence, and it was psychology, and it was perception. And I think that's the big difference between then and now is that we've decided for some reason. It's like you know, after Buster Douglas knocks out Mike Tyson, suddenly everyone who's afraid of him thinks, oh, m maybe I can knock him out too. It's a, it's a change in universal perception. Yes. And things like Andy was mentioning, a Palm had uh, synergy for a while, where you take all your messaging, put it into little silos, but manifest it all in one universe unified interface and there's all these great software ideas but Apple was stuck scraping Google off their phone and setting up Passbook and outsourcing their social networks last year and now this year they've got to work on that for well, iOS 7. Passbook's a great, they, a great yeah. example of, a, of a, a solution that doesn't do anything that it promises. It's stuck oh, with know. the third parties I, that feed it. it works the great company, for, yeah. I'm web sorry, apps go, go are ahead, horrible Ray. that feed. Yeah, sorry. Well, the, the, the web apps that Passbook itself is fantastic. I drive up to Starbucks, they scan me, and I'm gone. But the apps that you use to put stuff into, and in some cases get out of Passbook, are these horrible little web apps with tiny buttons that want all your PayPal and login information <laughs> and tiny little fields. And the stuff outside of Apple's control isn't as good as the stuff in their control yet. Yeah. I, I think I think Renee was spot on. I think I, I would expand that to call it like the Simpsons effect, where no no season of the Simpsons is as good right. as the first three seasons when right. you started listening to it because you forget you forget that out of twenty episodes or twenty two episodes a season, there was there was the monorail episode that would become legendary. There'd right. be eight that you'd really like. There'd be five or six that you'd be like, okay, that was an off week, and then three where you're just oh. Dear, why did I bother even finishing watching this? I think that Apple's the same way. I mean, if you go, but you don't have to go back too far to find years in which you know the iSync didn't really work properly. Yes. iTunes, iTunes has, has never been. It's it has has it's been a while, it's been a while since iTunes has been as good an app as a lot of us would want it to be. So I mean, I think that when you, we, I think it's it's like you know the the, the you are coming off we're still coming off the high of the iPhone, the high of the iPad, and we expect that now every single thing right. they do has to be the iPhone, has to be the iPad. That said, I think it's very very good that the Apple community of users is recognizing that there is no magic wiffle dust that makes them into this genius Jesus level organization. They are a tech company that promote that uh, that has a very, very clear idea of what they think technology should be. Sometimes that idea is in sync with what you want and need. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes they do it successfully. Sometimes they don't. But the, what keeps my faith in Apple is that I know that they always believe in the things that they do, and they always try very, very, very hard to give consumers the best experience possible. Product over profit, I think. And we're also in an era now where the things that that are important are not the things that Apple has historically done well, things like right. uh, cloud, cloud services. Yeah. And yeah. they're facing big challenges that they didn't have to face. Uh, or, or like Andy mentioned, iSync or back to my Mac years ago. And it, it's going to be a huge <laughs> oh God, struggle yes. to get those right. <laughs> we're going to take about back to my Mac. <laughs> we're going to take a break. Come back with more. Renee Ritchie from iMore is here. His Apple is doomed episode of the iMore podcast went out at midnight. <laughs> 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 Poor guy. Doomed again. Doomed period, again. <laughs> again. Again. Uh, wonderful uh, surprise appearance from Alex Lindsay of Pixel Core. Great to have you here. It's good to be here. The original Mac Daddy of Mac Break Weekly. And, of course, Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun-Times. Pixelated for the last time, ladies and gentlemen. Our show today brought to you by Audible.com, that great bookstore of audio books. How many? Well over 100,000. I haven't counted recently. That It's probably, you know, you know, I could do a search for all books. I think if I think that's what we did last time to figure out. the uh, They're recorded uh, in uh, audio format that allows you to play them on almost anything. There's an Audible app, which is fantastic, that lets you play uh, the audio books on can the I, iPhone, the Android phone, and Windows phone. Yes? Can I can I say something about that? Yes, please. I, I, I for a long time, the first Audible app that came out wasn't, 
wasn't super featured. It's terrible. Until I got into the habit. <laughs> it's horrible. It's it horrible. I was let's, trying to be nice. I was trying to be honest. honest. It was unusable. Let's be so, honest. So when I, when they first came out, it was just completely. And so I just stuck with iTunes. And so so I would just order all my Audible books through iTunes. Um, and that turned out to be a big mistake. So if you're getting into Audible now, get the app, buy it through Audible, don't buy through iTunes. And the reason is, is now it, it's barely, um, it's barely even referred to in iTunes, in your music section. In iTunes, it's hard to find. And when you change and you don't have the connection correct, everything else, you lose all your books. When you do it through audible.com and you do it with their app, it means that it stays in the cloud. I love their app. You can download it again. Yeah. It's like Kindle. It's like everything's yeah. up there no matter when you and bought it. And that's nice, too. All the books you've ever bought on, uh, on Audible are always available in your life. Yeah, I can't even find where you know, I bought. I mean, I spent hundreds of dollars in iTunes on Audible books yeah. that now I can't, you know, I'm, I'm having trouble getting. And so so the um, audible.com and, and, the, and the new application that they have out on the, on the at least on the iPhone is... Uh, is awesome. And I'm going to download it on my Android they app. They have a yet. Windows 8 app, a Metro app that's Those guys nice. are crazy. It's really and nice. And they have the like they have the speed up so you can do like 1.5, yep, which is yep, very important yep. and um it's great. 124,000 books. I just did the count or titles I guess should say at audible.com. It goes up all the time. It is an amazing resource. If you spend time in the car driving, if you uh you know, I listen at the gym, you know, on yep. the stairmaster, it's so boring that Audible is a lifesaver. It's uh, if cleaning. You're cleaning house. That's my big one. I play it through the entire house really loud. <laughs> I can hear it in every room, even over the vacuum cleaner. I'm sure my neighbors are really enjoying book two of the King Killer Chronicles. <laughs> uh, let's say, you know, I, I have plenty of recommendations, as anybody who's an Audible fan does, but let's, I always like to hear what Andy's listening to because he's got such, he's introduced me to more titles. I just love his eclectic. You're not reading Frank Kona, the Red Sox years, are you? Terry Francona's no. uh, biography there? Uh, no, I, as, <laughs> sports sports biographies, uh, they're such a crapshoot for me because you never know. Like, it's it's great when they get like a lifelong friend of the athlete is who knows him very very well and knows what stories to pull out of him are good. It's it's another one when like there's a you, you feel as though there's a three hour conference call in yeah. which half of the stories are the publicist saying, okay, you can't remember, you, you can't, can't say use that. that story, you can't say that. <laughs> Wade Boggs drinking twenty eight beers on like one ten hour flight. Back from a road. You can't write about that. You can't. Write now, about I will that. give you one that you, I'm sure you've read that is a classic, more than 20 years old now Jim Bouton's Ball Four. And that is oh, audible. Yeah, I read. I read that. Perfect. That was the the, the story of the, the story of the Seattle uh, area pitcher. It was like one of the first like behind the scenes tell all books. It was. It was. It blew the lid yeah, off but, of but, Major but was, League Baseball. Really, it wasn't really a tell all book. It was more like somebody who's had amazing experiences in professional sports, but is also an exceptional storyteller. So it's not as though you're just talking about. You just the uh, the he, he's at, uh, grinding old axes or selling off whatever weird stories he has be, to, to pay off whatever boat that he wish he hadn't bought before he blow out his you know <laughs> blow out his knee or whatever so yeah that was that, that was a fantastic book i didn't know it was on audible it is I, and I, jim I, bouton reads it which is going to be great <sighs> it, it it came out in 1975 and it you know it's often credited with uh, creating free agency the book was used to test testimony during the arbitration <laughs> hearings <laughs> for free agency um so if you if you if you're kind of hankering for baseball there's a great choice i have just uh, i finished no easy day if you saw uh, 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 what is it? Zero Dark Thirty. Mm -hmm. um, the the story is to a great extent based on uh, this account by one of the SEAL Team it's Six members. Book. It's really it's also about being a SEAL Team yeah. uh, member, which is great. It's fantastic. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Can't put it down. If you're really into that, also the SEAL Team Six, the book SEAL Team Six is really good. Yeah, yeah. Did I say CTM Seven? No, mm -hmm. I said Six. I hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no. By the way, there's no one through five. They're just SEAL Team Six. <laughs> Did you know that? There's a lot. Yeah, it's. Yeah, in fact, they don't even call themselves that in the in the book. He calls himself something else. But anyway, it doesn't yeah, matter. Really. <laughs> doesn't matter. Uh, Moneyball. There's a great one. And uh, uh, Michael Lewis's amazing book about uh, the Oakland A's. They made a movie out of it, uh, and how uh, Billy Bean at the Oakland A's turned that team around. And uh, what are you reading, Andy? Uh, actually, the what I just started into was a book that was I th just was re-released in audio just a couple weeks ago, or at least rebranded. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock and the Making of Psycho. Oh, uh, I want to read that. Yeah, it's because because the movie with Anthony Hopkins. They, I, I'm not sure. I, I wasn't aware there was an, in audio uh, before. Now it, it's it's one of the classic books of here is uh, I, I love these 
biography type books that don't try to cover somebody from the birth to their moment of their death and that is, tries to find an overarching theme with and psychoanalyzing every scene in their life. I think the best biographies are the ones that say, well, here is one project they did. Here is one four year, five year span. And we're going to get so deep into this that we feel as though you're going to really know about this person by the, by the time you get to the end of this project. So this is about nothing but Alfred Hitchcock making Psycho. Every decision that went into it, every influence wow. he had, every argument he had with the studio, every bit of abusive and psycho controlling uh, behavior that he exerted to get exactly what he wanted from uh, from uh, uh, Lay and all and, and all the, the other characters. Uh, I'm only about a couple of chapters into it right now, but it, it's it's already one of those. You know, I was going to I, I, I was going to watch this two hour TV marathon tonight. I think instead I will simply sit in my chair and listen to more audio of this because I want to know what happens right before the shower scene. I want to know how this argument actually pays out. There's lots of stories. And, you know, they just made a movie the, uh, about. Uh, oh, no, that was about the Tippi Hendren and the birds. No, no. Well, two, two came out at the same time. One that was, was the girl. The birds, right. And the other one is uh, was uh, starring Anthony Hopkins. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, ooh, can't remember her name. Extra the 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 uh, if if this were super password, all I would have to say is older English accent actress still hot. Yes, I know who you're talking <laughs> about. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, by the way, there's so many. There's so many good books. Here's here's I'm going to be listening to this. You know, I'm going to the Super Bowl because Lisa is a big fan of the Niners and. I guess the Niners won a game or something, and we're going to New Orleans. So I've got uh, my next <laughs> book is law. on Audible is A Woman's Guide to Football, How to Talk His Language, <laughs> The Basics. <laughs> Wait a minute, I just got to hear a little bit of this because I think that I need this. Away. Those maneuvers to keep people away from the guy on your team who's holding the ball are called blocks. Blocks. The field is 100 yards long and 53 and a third yards wide. Okay. As you listen, imagine that the 100 <laughs> yards runs right and left in your mind. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to stop now and think about this. Right and left, 100 yards, 50 <laughs> yards. Okay, I got it. 53 <laughs> wide. I'm trying that's to memorize this now. Please. It's, it's, that's, that's a little bit like, you know, <laughs> That's a little bit condescending. It's like the football field is about the same proportions as, I don't know, like a medium roasting pan or a browning pan. <laughs> Lisa's looking at me funny now. <laughs> like the main room at Borgnall. I did, I did buy the idiot's, no, the uh, d uh, uh, complete dummy's guide to football. I did buy that, actually. <laughs> that, I, that I could use again. Yeah. I, 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 know, I know it's the one where there's a ball and you're allowed to touch it with your hands and there's grass. You know, you know, and, and, always, and it always interrupts. It always interrupts Amazing Race. That's all I know about football. <laughs> you know, in, in Pittsburgh they have they have whole classes like support groups for women who are trying to you know. What keep about up men? With what about what's people like is, me? I'm a football what, widower. What's funny is it's only people who actually <laughs> move to Pittsburgh because all the women that already grew no, up in Pittsburgh no, already understand the, the the process. <laughs> um, <laughs> the point here is Audible has many many choices and you can get <laughs> <laughs> you can get. Audible. It's shaped somewhat like a chafing ball. dish on your web. <laughs> and uh, it, think of it as a chafing dish filled with books. It's like talking to your mother, except that it's... Uh, <laughs> 53 dead. yards wide. Yes, exactly. And it's, it's lots of useful tidbits. <laughs> remember, remember the time when you had company coming over, you were about to put the casserole in the <laughs> oven, but some of it slopped over to the edges and time seemed to stop? That's exactly what happens when a people person with the ball runs out of bounds. They stop the clock, <laughs> just like in the casserole. Just like in the casserole. <laughs> okay, I won't buy the woman. Guide to football, <laughs> but anyway, you get you get your, your first book is free. Audible.com slash MacBreak. You'll be signing up for the gold account. That's the subscription plan that gives you a book a month. And by the way, with subscription plans, you also get your choice of the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times Daily read to you. You know, the like the highlights, which is a really nice thing in the car. You listen to the news, you listen to a book, you're set. And listen to a podcast, you're set. You could have an 18 hour commute, you'd be fine. So Audible.com slash MacBreak. Join today. First month is free. First book is free. You're canceled anytime. It's yours to keep forever. What are you laughing at? Just like Such a casserole. Alex, how would Jar Jar Binks describe football? How would Jar Jar Binks describe football? <laughs> I don't. I Put think him it on would the be spot. Like a, mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. You can't do that voice when you're laughing. He thinks he's got this. He's passing this time. Mm. I'm second hand. No, not really. They just mm. hit him. Mm. He should play ball now. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> you, you just think that's a that's a horror. <laughs> like kingdom for a blaster. 
<laughs> At least with Disney, Jar Jar will be yes. Own Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, something like that. Uh, this, you know, so, okay, next, next year at this time, we're going to be uh, commemorating the 30th anniversary of the Apple Macintosh. Isn't that crazy? Today, we're actually the 19th, in 1983, Apple unveiled two products, not quite as huge as the Macintosh, the Lisa and the Apple IIe are 30 years old I got an, this I, week. I had, the, the Apple IIe was the first computer I actually owned. I think a lot of people watching, that was the first computer. Yeah. The, you know, the two Apple was famous for, but the IIe was a great computer. It yes. was color, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't even get me started. It's my the first color. Uh, my dad, I, I told him I wanted an Apple IIe, and he got it, and then he got it me a green monitor. So I knew that it was a oh, color dad. machine with a green monitor. Dad. But yeah, no, the Apple II Plus had also the, had, uh, Apple II Plus also had color. The Apple II was green. had color. Yeah, and... Um, and the Apple II Plus came out, and that was a big difference because the Franklin, which was the, you remember the, it was it the knockoff. Color. Yeah. And then, and then so, um, anyway, so I got the, uh, oh, the Apple, the Apple, the Apple, nope, the Apple I had II, the, the Apple II, II Plus, but my father's office had a Lisa, and I remember the first oh, time I, I sat down, Lisa. I just dragged everything to the trash can because it was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and you were never invited back. <laughs> I was never, yeah, it was put away after that. <laughs> the Lisa, I remember standing in the window, like a, you know, with my nose pressed to the glass looking mm -hmm. at the Lisa. It was, at the time, nine thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. It was insane. Which is yeah. in today's money, according uh, to uh, the article from uh, the AP. No, Samantha Lyle, Lyle writing at Personal Finance Hub. Uh, not today, it would be twenty-three thousand dollars. Twenty. So of course, the Lisa didn't do very well. Nobody's going to spend twenty-three thousand dollars on I mean, a the personal computer. Year, I think we it was thought like two thousand. Mac was expensive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, the Lisa was a 5 megahertz processor, had dual floppy disk drives, those Twiggy drives. They were, had a little bit of a design flaw. The opening for the floppy was right where you put your thumb when you pulled it out. <laughs> yeah, maybe somebody should have thought of that. Uh, so that proves, you know, Apple hasn't always been perfect. Yep. But it was well, the first based on the Xerox uh, star interface, the windowed GUI with icons, pull down menus. Um it was 10 months Apple later that app, that Microsoft did Windows. So it was the first. Right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Renee. It also shows like, you know, Apple 1 to Apple 2, Lisa to Mac. Apple often has, you know, not a really great product before they nail it with the next thing. Yeah. Well, that, that's true of every company, right? Your first, your first edition might be, uh, look at Windows 8. <laughs> you might <laughs> have a little. Windows 9 going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> but, also, but, also, but also shows something even better about Apple that they are completely willing to torpedo one of their own successful products if they really think that this is where we need to be in the next five years. That they, the, Remember all the stuff that was, all the complaints about the Macintosh that were absolutely spot on, that there was no software for it. It was incompatible with Apple software. It was incompatible with, with DOS software. Uh, that, uh, that the Apple IIe, it was the the hundred the, the at least a hundred pound gorilla, uh, which can it's still it's still got amazing upper body strength and teeth. So don't don't turn your back on a hundred pound gorilla by any means. Uh, it was it was just a monster monster hit monster seller. The fact that they would come out with something that would in some ways challenge it for for supremacy and it eventually take sales away from it, you know, it became impossible. Uh, to to improve upon the Apple IIe, pa partly because well, partly because it is such a bad job with the Apple III, but also partly because uh, of the, the the Macintosh was definitely the, the the sexy computer you wanted to have next, as opposed to a a, a new iteration of a multi slot uh, text based computer. So remember, that, that, if you read Steve's the uh, Steve uh, Jobs biography by Walter Isaacson, he talks about the Lisa and really the schism that developed at Apple because Steve felt the Lisa was too expensive. He really wanted to make a less expensive... <laughs> and, and, and he, he was, was right. right <laughs> and was f essentially forced out by the board because he right. developed the Mac and, and really created a schism within Apple. And the board eventually forced him out and said, John Scully, you run this company. Uh, that the Lisa was the beginning of the end for Steve Jobs because he didn't believe in it. He didn't want him right. to make a Lisa. And basically the Mac cut it off, right? I the mean, Mac cut it off oh, yeah. at the knees. Right. Sort of like the iPhone and the iPod. You know, And now in hindsight, the iPod is diminishing and the iPhone is rising and Apple... Apple's one of the few companies that doesn't mistake their products for their business. And it's really tempting to think if you make A, that's the business, but there's usually something behind it. And Apple's been fairly good at understanding that they don't make Apples or they don't make Macs or they don't make iPods. They make these devices that let us do things. And there's new incarnations of those just as one is starting to, to fall down again. Yeah. So Lisa and the Apple IIe, happy birthday this week. It's kind of amazing to think that's been 30 years, 1983. 
Makes me feel old. <laughs> me too. <laughs> wow. Um, let's see. So uh, do you, uh, you did ask a question, Andy, which at the very beginning of the show, which we haven't answered yet, which is what would you see in the, uh, in the quarterly results announced tomorrow by Apple that would indicate, and I'll, I'll, I'll restate a little bit, either on the positive or the negative, uh, you know, will give you some indication of whether there is, it is doomed or if there's a great future. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot, it's it's a good question in, in any way you phrase it. Mostly, mostly I was saying that I was trying to sort of and <laughs> underscore like the disconnection there should be between financial results and the products that they make and the, and the, and the services they make. So, sometimes I think that the, the things that kind of uh, annoy me, frustrate me, disappoint me about so much of the conversation these days is that – uh, any conversation about how good an Apple competitor is is yes, but look how much look how much Apple is growing versus this competitor's company is growing. Or gee, you know, uh, Apple's Apple seems to the 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 iPhone five uh, sales uh, immediately after its launch are not as fast as sales of the iPhone 4s was the previous year. It's like. The, let's get down to the basic point. Is it a successful company? Yes. So successful that they can continue to do what the, whatever they want to do? Yes. Uh, does the fact that the stock price is going down or the fact they might have sold fewer units this quarter than the same quarter last year, does that affect your enjoyment of your Apple device? No, it doesn't. Okay. Conversation over. Now let's talk about what, what, what different Mac-based note-taking apps we all like. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Apple has apparently... Uh, Pulled uh, 500 PX uh, apps from the uh, market. Um, I guess the uh, assumption is that the 500 PX, which is a Flickr-like site, a really good one, that a lot of uh, really pros sort of, yeah. use, uh, are uh, it's apparently too easy to search for nude photos. <laughs> Who knew? Uh, Safari. <laughs> um, so uh, Apple has pulled its mobile apps from the App Store. Um, you know, th there's this thing called the World Wide Web. And um, you open a Safari, you can go to pretty much anything, the most hardcore porn you want. Stuff that's, Leo, they're going to pull Safari. You ought to pull Safari, Apple. Apple reviewer told the company the update couldn't be approved because it allowed users to search for nude photos. Actually, <laughs> it actually, 500px had made it a little harder to do so. Um, you, you had to, sh safe search was the default. You had to go in and uh, turn it off. I got to tell you, uh, on Tumblr, it's almost hard not to see nude photos, whether you search yeah. or not. Mm -hmm. That was it. Was it a was it an issue where it allows that kind of search, or was it simply an issue where it was mislabeled inside the App Store? Because I was looking at the I was looking at the uh, the warnings for uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and it's and there it it's in the App Store even though it has warnings of mild to excessive violence, mild to excessive uh, sexual content, mild to excessive drug use. Uh, is it a labeling? Is is if they resubmitted and simply uh, made sure that there was the appropriate labels, and the appropriate warnings before someone could download it, and they could just simply resubmit it, or was it just simply? Sorry, we don't we don't we don't like the gal the, the lovely gallery effect you have on your you know I was about to you know <laughs> on on your on your nudie pics. I know it's, it's interesting. Art, I know you say it's artfully artful nudie pics, but there's still you know one of those being done with one of those. We can't have that. The, the folks at 500 PX are furious. They say the app was in the yeah, store for 16 months until uh, they drew attention to it with these new anti nudity measures. <sighs> But, you know, if you launch one password, it's got a browser built in, so it has to tell you that it's an adult application that could access. I know, that always bugs the hell out of me. Yeah, um, and it, like Andy said, it could be that they didn't tick that box for that content, or it could just be that once again we have the Will Ferrell-like character in the App Store who approves tethering apps and disapproves <laughs> apps that have been there for months. Uh, you just really got to wonder um, if if this hurts Apple or not. I mean, yeah. it... it, it is is does Apple gain uh, sales by doing this? Do they somehow reassure parents? Oh well, they're blocking nudie apps, so I think we should buy jo Johnny an iPhone. Well, I think that there is. A, I mean, what is the what is a, the gain to Apple to well, do this? I, I, and I don't know why. I mean, especially if you have to deactivate it on the web. I don't. I don't have 500 picks, so I don't know. But I. But I think that if you have to actually turn the Safe Surf off, uh, the only question I have is whether the Safe Surf was really working. I mean, I know that. As a parent, I think you might be just labeling. It might just be there's yeah. adult potential it's, adult content. Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. I mean, it, it, the, the issue is, is it as a um, 
I have to be careful, like what kind of apps, like one of the big problems that we had with, because I mean, my three and five year old run around with, with uh, iPads all the time. And so. Does Apple do that this, for Safari? No. Does Apple, before you launch Safari, say, hey, by the way, you could go to adult sites on this browser. Oh no! I, no. And, no. Well, and and, and the, but you why? Up, what's the double standard here? The phone inherently can go to porn, thanks to an app I Apple think, put on there, I, including I searching 500 px for nudes in the app. I don't I understand the, the double I think, standard. I think for a certain segment of the population, I think that this is probably a plus. <laughs> you know, well, is well, it, the, you know they're going to be more. You know, knowing that there's a controlled environment. I mean, it's. It's one of those things that um, I, I don't think that I, I said I don't quite understand this decision, but um, being able to have as a parent, being able to have solid control over what's actually happening, you know, exactly what my kids are, you know, it's it's mostly uh, what we mostly have is there's a back end to like YouTube from Angry Birds, and so what my kids do is they watch the that Angry Birds videos. They watch the Angry Birds do, videos, then they watch YouTube, and then there's then does my within, phone within have to be minutes, limited because you let your kids use your phone? No, no, no. I'm just saying that, that Apple, seems ridiculous. Apple, Apple is developing a market, and they're looking for a certain clientele, and and that clientele, you know, part of that clientele what? is four year olds, schools, um, parents. Yeah, but but I cannot now use the 500 px app, even though I'm an adult. This sounds like one of those dumb things where someone in Apple higher up on the review committee or the executive committee looks at it and goes, "Oh, you did what, and we had to put up with what? Just put that app back, and you know, you're on suspension for no today." Yeah. Here's another one. This is. Uh, uh, <laughs> VentureBeat writes about this, Jeffrey Grubb, uh, in the Apple uh, gu guidelines. We view apps differently than books or songs, which we do not curate. If you want to criticize a religion, write a book. If you want to describe sex, write a book or a song or create a medical app. It, we, it can get complicated, but we have decided not to allow certain kinds of content in the App Store. This is Steve Jobs' legacy. Remember, Steve was, like, mm -hmm. proud of the fact that you couldn't get porn on the uh, iPhone, even though, even though you obviously can. <laughs> Android's a porn phone. Yeah, he said Android's a porn porn phone. Yes. I don't know how this hippie guy, like, Steve Jobs, is, got to be such a prude. <laughs> Thank God dollar. your picture's pixelated, Andy. That's all I can say. Yeah, this, 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 this 500px app is super, super hot. Hot. Oh, my God. <laughs> actually, I should actually check to make sure. Okay, good. There is no nudity in there. <laughs> no, and actually, by default, and this has always been at 500px, because there, there are a lot of nudes, artistic, by the way, not pornographic, artistic nudes on 500px. It's a photographer's site. Um, by default, they've always blocked those. Uh, the safe search is on. Now, there's a Flickr app. You could do exactly the same thing on Flickr, by the way. Tons of Wikipedia apps. Just uh, it seems yeah. like such a yeah. Well, I mean, you, and you by the see, way, well, if you search, if you search, like they say, write a book if you're doing a, if you're doing a sex one, just do a search in the in the app store for Kama Sutra. Yeah, there's yeah. like I mean, it's not, it's a not dozen like, Kama know, Sutra apps. Yeah, yeah. But so, also, yeah, and that's also not a medical that's, app. That, that's why I was looking for like Vice City, that which is a just a, a really it's a fun game, but you know it's a violent game. It's not for kids. People are doing extremely extreme things. Yeah. In it. And it really it it doesn't speak well of Apple that if they're not willing to allow a game that has a purpose that or excuse me that the people who create the game feel as though there's an educational purpose to it and that's not allowed. But if you want to shoot a hooker in the face and steal steal her car, perfectly fine as long as there are points involved. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I think back to the uh, a few years ago when someone released a brilliant game uh, that essentially was a first person shooter that puts you in Oswald's sniper's nest in Dealey Plaza. Oh, wow. And it got it got a lot of it got a lot of like really negative attention because people thought that oh well you're teaching kids to have fun shooting the president no because the physics were actually quite accurate the views from the sniper's nest are were absolutely wonderful and if there's any way that you can start to bite into the people's suspicion that the, of the lone gunman theory fine here's a gun that has the, all the performance characteristics of the gun that Oswald used here is a accurate model of the physics here's an accurate model of the place here is the car modeled accurately on the accurate terrain going exactly as fast the broad care was going see if you can do it and it was within within one day people were saying you know I don't, not only was i able to duplicate oswald shooting i was able to kill other people in the car and do it <laughs> faster so so it's it's there are ways that you can use games to educate in ways that or by the same coin to manipulate people uh, in ways that you can't do with a book or piece of music and if apple is saying that we're not interested in, in publishing apps that have that kind of controversial pot potentially role I think that doesn't speak well of them. I, I understand what they want to do there because they it's not as though they want to 
their, their goal is we want to limit people's speech. It's that they want to limit the amount of hassle they have to go, the company has to go through in order to have a functioning app store. If they feel as though if it means that we occasionally have to uh, not approve an app that has that kind of religious content or political content, we would much rather take the small amount of crap we're going to get for that than the enormous amounts of crap we would get uh, by having an app that uh, from the from Reverend Phelps, for instance. Well, but that's and that's the point is that w once you start censoring things it is a mire don't even get involved and you Although, know I mean, it's, it's, we come from an era of open computing if this had happened on a compute platform oh you can't buy that app for your mac it would be uh, offensive in the in the highest degree right there is and a what makes the phone so different there's, the one thing, though, is that this is not an outside body telling Apple they can't have the app. This is Apple ed exercising ed editorial discretion. The same way like NBC won't air my uh, basement sitcom or the New York Times won't publish my diatribe. They're electing not to have this sold in their store. So it's a little bit different than when people often think. No, it, it would be right more like stuff. Sony but, saying you can't watch porn on our television. If it That's was, what uh, it would be like, the because they're making the mm -hmm. hardware. They're not telling us yeah, they, if they said you can use somebody else's store, that's, that's, then that's, that's not, fine. That's not, that's you not can the use same Safari. thing. That, that, that would be that would be that similarity would be okay if they had if all the video players that were on the that were built into the thing said that we will not allow you to play any unrated content or uh, well, a content that's rated above this level. We are not going to allow that to happen on our device. That's what it's like. Uh, well, I think it's more. I think, I, th I, think, I think the danger is really more like what's happened to Walmart where. Walmart gets into trouble in saying that we will not carry this movie, we will not carry this book, we will not carry this game because we it's you know it's it's not family Walmart values. Uh, but here's the or, difference: or, 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 the big like, difference means, is wait, that wait, you wait, can wait, only wait, buy. Wait, 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 but the difference is you can only buy apps that? from Apple. It means that it means that it means that Walmart gets this reputation as no, this is not a place where you actually can buy things you want. It's a it's a place with a corporate agenda and a political agenda in a sense, and a and a and a and a, and, and a, a society agenda. It's not an open marketplace and that's the real that's the attitude that they're saddled with the public opinion they're saddled with the danger to apple and they're f certainly free to pursue whatever agenda they want to pursue but the danger is that people will not associate the itunes content store with an open marketplace where you can get anything you want and that's well, and, in, a and, place where, that in a place where the the, the sony store and the, uh, the 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 google play store and the amazon stores are more wild west hope that doesn't bite them in the butt sometime it, it, and and I think that I, th I think the other li there's a liability issue. I think also for Apple is once you start making the, the, the censorship decisions, it also makes you possibly liable for the decisions you don't make. Yeah. So once it, if someone uses your an app on the App Store to do something illegal or to do other things that are there because you were censoring, you know, once you start stepping into it, um, the real challenge you get into after that is that you could get yourself into a position where you said, well, if you're if you're actually taking an active role here, and then something happened, why didn't you take action right. there so it does it, as, as Leo it's a, said, it's a it, dead it, end it's, it's a, a foolish it's a tar pit. Is, I mean, apple did you know, go on stage steve jobs was on stage saying we have two platforms we have the app store which we curate and we have web apps via safari which they use web.app and they use ui web view and stuff like that to and you can show anything you want in there which is why playboy made the html5 app that works great on the iPad, but they couldn't put that into the store. So they've clearly divided their two tracks. But again, I don't think this is, I mean, it, because it's nudity involved, it hits the censorship button and the editorial button hard. But I think this is just one of the dumb things that happened in the App Store, uh, and that get it gets reversed in fairly short order. If, if this is the whole story. I mean, you know, a lot of times when Apple does this, there's, or when there's complaints about it, we haven't seen all the details. So, and the thing is, is that Apple is definitely playing for a certain market. And the folks that are, you know, that that, that um, a lot of people who have iPads and iPhones and, and so on and so forth um, don't really care. <laughs> I mean, I, I, think, I think that's the issue is that they do care. They, they do They're going to start caring, I think. No, I, I don't think so. I think 80% of the population that has an iPad, iPhone won't care. And, and I think yeah. that that's the issue. That, that, that's what Apple, it, they do care. They will care if their kids are, are, are you know, running around with nudity on their phone, much, much less than they care about whether a, an app that they've never heard of is banned. is not going to mean anything to them. And I think that, you know, we, we in the tech industry oftentimes think about, you know, that it's all. It needs to be all, you know, free and open and everything else. And and you know, and I and I get sensitive about that. But I also, when I go back home and talk to my parents, they're just still figuring out how to put 
there's apps on their phone. I mean, you know, so, so the thing is, is that it's not my, my wife has like two pages of apps. So and she's not going to care. What she does get mad about is every time there's swearing coming out of the iPad from YouTube. Like, so what I get all the time is you need to make that go away. You need to make that stop. That I hear that over and over and over again. So I have to build all these little things into it to make sure my kids don't get to YouTube because my wife complains about it. So, so the thing is, there are a lot of people who are buying those, and whether they're schools or parents or whatever, and Apple's definitely, you know, more interested in that market than they are interested in, in folks that want absolute freedom. The one thing that the one thing that is dangerous, or maybe a little bit dangerous, is that developers who might make the next great app might become risk adverse. There's a lot of things in the App Store beyond censorship. The entire business model of the App Store that makes creating uh, risky, innovative apps less likely or less financially rewarding on the App Store. And if enough of those people decide to make great apps on other platforms and you start getting franchise-level killer apps that aren't on the iPhone or at least aren't first on the iPhone, yeah. then it becomes an Apple problem. Or when the, you know, the Wall Street Journal is writing about it, then it's an Apple problem. Until now, it's uh, someone who liked the 500px app problem. And you have to prove yeah. that the people that... The, the, the folks that care about that freedom are willing to pay for those apps, yeah. which I think has not been proven yet. Agreed. I mean, that's, that's the big problem for Android right now is it's just not enough pain. It doesn't, you talk to most developers, it just doesn't, it hasn't paid enough to recently. I mean, it's now picking up. It's definitely changing as this starts to build up. Um, but that's the, you know, that's the challenge that they all have in the marketplaces. We're going to take a break, come back with uh, rumors. What is Apple's roadmap for 2013? Mac Rumors says they know. I, I trust Rene Ritchie. He's the rumor king. We'll find out. <laughs> They're quoting an analyst, so we can blame the analyst. It's some dumb on. analyst. Oh, yes. I hate the analysts. It's not Gene Munster, is it? <laughs> no, it's it's actually one of the better analysts. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, it's worth hearing. Basically, we all until tomorrow, all we got is rumors anyway. At least it's, he's a better analyst because he's pulling it out of his ear instead of his butt. <laughs> yeah. Munster's at TV and remote control again. We know where Munster stands. <laughs> if you've got an iPhone and you want to get the newest, if you've got an iPad 3 and you want to get an iPad 4, if you have a, heaven forfend, a, uh, an older BlackBerry rim and you want to get a, a newer phone, I've got a place you can sell your stuff for a great price and do it easily and quickly. It's gazelle.com. Get your get your stuff moving here. Let's say you got a 4S, and you're saying I would I would love to get this iPhone 5. Let's get an offer here. It's in good condition. 240 bucks. That's gonna buy me the iPhone 5 right there. That's awesome. Isn't that a nice deal? Uh, if you've got a uh, you know I know a lot of people, myself included. Uh, it wasn't until I started playing that Simpsons game that I realized the iPad 3 is a little slow for the Retina display. Yes. If you've got Homer, Marge. You know, uh, Chief Wiggum, Beautiful. they're all wandering around at the same time. It's a little slow. So I'm thinking I'm going to take that iPad 3 third generation, AT&T, 64 gigabytes. Let's just check and see. It's in good shape. 365 bucks. Now I can buy an iPad 4 from practically nothing. This is, the kind of, this is the kind of great deal we're talking about. And what's good is these prices are good for 30 days. So if you think Apple's going to make an announcement next, you know, week, don't worry about it. Get the quote now. The price is not going up. <laughs> it's going down on everything. Uh, so get the quote now, and you have 30 days to take advantage of it. Once you get all your stuff together, press the button. Gazelle sends you a shipping container and pays the postage on anything worth more than a buck. So it's postage free. You just throw it all in there, send it to Gazelle, and then they send you a check, or if you're in a hurry, a PayPal credit. You can even get an Amazon gift card with an additional 5% on top of it. That's, I guess that they're rebating the uh, the affiliate fee or something like that. But anyway, it's a great deal. Go for it. If you like uh, Amazon, I buy everything on Amazon. That's the way to go. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E, -E, gazelle.com. Keep it moving. Uh, I, I, they have, I have the stat here. Let me, let me just check. They have sent so far $50 million to over a half a million customers since they started. Gazelle, they, by the way, they wipe your data, too. They have data professionals. They wipe the data. You don't have to worry about that. Gazelle.com. You're going to love it. Give it a try today. So uh, from uh, the Apple 2013 product roadmap, roadmap from Ming-Chi Kuo, who is a, an analyst at KGI Securities, and, uh, and Mac Rumors agrees with you, uh, Renee Ritchie, that uh, uh, Ming-Chi has a very good track record in predicting Apple's products. Here's what they say. This is the 2013 product and shipment roadmap. For the first thing, an Apple TV refresh in the first quarter, like in the next month or so. Second quarter, a new MacBook Air. 
We're due, aren't we? Sure. Maybe a retina display? What do you think? That sounds great. Oh, I'd not love yet. that. Not yet. No? Because you need a, a high-end uh, sub video sub graphics system. Well, it's the same be, problem yeah. as the iPad mini is that retina demands more size, more right. battery, more LED, and fitting that into a until you have breakthroughs in LED. and ba A lot of the stuff that analysts predict is based on components and technology right. that are available. Like Apple needs the next Qualcomm chip to do LTE, so you have a fairly good idea when they won't do it before and when they might do it. Right. And the same thing for the iPad mini retina and the MacBook Air retina is they need a panel, uh, LED, and a battery that will let them keep that form factor and power that display at the same time. And like you mentioned, Leo, the graphics chip as well. And I have to say, I would pay the same amount of money for my Retina um, if it wasn't Retina. In fact, and I'd still buy it. And I'd buy Wait a minute. <laughs> what? The Retina. I hate the Retina. You don't like the Retina. Oh, the, the amount of processing power does, that we know, give up and the, and the graphics errors and all the little weird tearing that I get. Really? Yeah, so if you open up Photoshop yeah. or OmniGraphle and you start playing on other things, you'll start seeing tearing, you'll see all kinds of other Can't stuff. Can't keep and that's up. All. And it's, it's the weird out. thing, like you capture an image and suddenly it's a lot bigger than what you expected. And tr and then this whole like, when you hook another monitor outside of it and you now have to go to scaled and it's all, I, I just, I really want my old, my old Gosh, you interface were, you back. were in love with the MacBook Pro Retina. No, I love the laptop. Everything about it. Everything about it except for the screen. So oh, really? the the two Thunderbolts, the HDMI out. The I wish I had one more USB. Do you think they pushed Retina too soon since they're yeah. not going to be able to put it on Absolutely. anything else? It's too early. Absolutely. Well, it's like the the very first MacBook Air that wasn't a great machine, and the right. the yeah. real MacBook Air came later. This is like the first step towards a. This is the Apple or the Lisa of the Retina. And I really wish they'd. It, wow, I, I love really it. wish they they just. <laughs> I'm feeling bad now. I, just I love they, my Retina. Yeah. If you're not pushing it really too, hard, I think it's fine. I, I think that yeah. the the big issue is is that if you if you really need performance out of that laptop, and that laptop is so powerful. Powerful, and it's got so many things going for it. I just wish they'd build a version that was non-retina and a version that was retina, so that people actually needed performance out of it. Right. They just didn't need pretty text, but actually need performance out of it could actually get it. Well, Ming Chi Kuo says there will be a new design retina MacBook Pro in the third quarter. Right about the same time, Apple announces two new iPhones. They're thinking June or July for yeah, what we thought an iPhone 5s and an iPhone 5 revamped. Is this the math that they're talking about? Uh, so here's what they're saying. The iPhone 5S will be an A7 system on a chip for better performance. It will have a fingerprint sensor, a faster camera, F2.0 aperture, smarter LED flash. And then they will do an iPhone 5 repackaged into a slightly thicker plastic enclosure in six colors. Where do they get this? This must be from the suppliers, Renee, right? I mean, there's no reason you, you couldn't pull this out of your butt. <laughs> no, well, the, the less expensive iPhone is something that my understanding is Apple's been working on for right. years. And they've, they've had prototypes for it, but they chose instead to lower the cost of other iPhones and make those available. Right. Uh, Apple works on tons of stuff in the labs, it's whether they ever go to market on it. And uh, if there comes a point where they decide that a low-end colorful iPhone will increase their addressable market and make them more money and will still be a great product because they'll never do a netbook of iPhones, and then they'll release it. Uh, somebody in the chat room, Empower Mac, is asking about an IGZO display, indium gallium zinc oxide. That helps uh, we've, new LEDs that help. We've seen them in TVs. They look gorgeous uh, on the show floor at CES. Supposedly, according to Digitimes, Apple has been in discussion with Sharp over these IGZO panels for 2013. If they can get the yield rates and the pricing that right. they need. How uh, about you give us an Ethernet port? <laughs> <laughs> Stop improving. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. I have to admit that after, uh, after um, putting down Andy's... Uh, issues about the ethernet port probably the number one thing that i run into is um showing up at a location you know to test the location so or whatever plug without, it into the thunder i know i just i just i don't have a little you know because it's not built in you know you get you, yeah you know, someone you borrowed me. it next thing i know i don't have one well and, and this is really true you cannot go out into the world with a macbook without the little package of connectors there is about eight of them yeah you gotta have that because Look at I have just the same bag. Yeah, <laughs> I have exactly the same bag. That's like how to glue everything into everything. And now I also have now I have lightnings in there of all kinds. Yeah, no, I have I have these have lightning to HDMI, uh, and then a whole bunch of thunderbolts and whole, all you know to to to. We've come a long way, baby. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the IGZO is a lower power, yep. so and it's a improved touch sensitivity and high. It could be higher pixel density, as well. And the glass edge is slimmer.
so the devices can be smaller. All of these things are things you would like in your in your portable devices, iPhones and iPads. So that's that's a uh, let's hope that rumor is uh, accurate. The iPad and the iPad Mini, Apple will update both lines during the third quarter. That's June, July, August. Sure. September. It's actually July, August, September. With the iPad Mini gaining a Retina display is the most notable change. He also predicts a full-size iPad will become considerably slimmer and lighter with those bezels uh, that the Mini has. Yeah, I'm really interested in the fingerprint scanner. I am. What I think, though, is I think what's more likely is, or what's be more useful is, is facial recognition. They, they do a lot of work in that area. Me being able to just take my I've iPad had and go like this and, and open up my, and open up my uh, you know. Android does that, but it's so bad. It doesn't, it sort of does it sometimes. Windows 8 does it. You mean fingerprint of, or, or? Well, I've had fingerprint on laptops, but the, no, Android has the face recognition and, and ju Juju Bean. You're only one Leo mask away from getting all his stuff. Yeah, it's just not. It's in fact they don't even <laughs> also, say it's secure. Well, you know, it depends on what kind of camera they're using. I mean, there there is a lot of technology out there that's not just using the um, the ge ge geometry. Uh, it is actually using heat recognition. So it depends on what kind of camera they put into the front of that. As far as I mean, you can. Um, I th anyway, there's a lot I, of good technology in that area. I think the the bigger problem is that if you're not there's not 100 percent of all situations are ones in which you can really uh, conveniently go like this before you actually use. No, but your I think phone. having that as an option for, for me being able to hit something because it's just yeah, uh, typing but, the code but in. Is, is, that, is that really the Apple way? I think the Apple way is to figure out what they think is the best way of doing something and make that as perfect as they can make it, mm -hmm. rather than saying you want a fingerprint, we'll give you a fingerprint. You want a face well, recognition, we'll give you a face recognition. This has, I think whether it's, it's, like a Pixar, whether, it's, you know? whether it's Android or iOS, I think biometric um, controls become very important as we as we move into digital IDs in the next yeah. decade. Is that it's not just going to be a code. It has to be something that is. It, it may I mean, not be that something that you use just to open your phone. Biometrics is good if it if it works, but these devices are so stupid. Well, they have to. But they, this is the beginning. This is like this, this is the is beginning. Like, says, oh, it's not I, working I'm about yet. To turn on. They have face unlock. They have face and voice unlock on uh -huh. Android. Yeah. Here's what it says: Look at your look at your phone to unlock it. Keep these things in mind. Face unlock is less secure than a pattern pin or password. Someone who looks similar to you could unlock your phone. The data used to identify your face is kept private. Shall we set it up? Find an indoor spot, not too bright, not too dim. <laughs> Hold the phone at eye level. Do not use it while driving. <laughs> okay, starting up. Here's my face. My voice is my passport. Authorize me. Yes. It's very good reference. Don't Sneakers. move. Steven Tobolowski. <laughs> very good. Wow. You read it too, huh? All right. Say but the think... word or phrase you used to use as your wake-up command four times. Mac break weekly sucks. Mac Break Weekly sucks. Now I've got to say that four times. Mac Break Weekly sucks. Oh. Mac, <laughs> Mac Break Weekly sucks. I don't think it's going to work as well. You're not allowed to laugh. Well, I, I, think I, I think we know what our show title is going to have to be. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Neil. But I, I, well, I, agree, I, agree, I absolutely agree with what you're saying, Alex. I mean, I, I think that... Uh, an another way that if you want to think about what Apple, what you think Apple might be doing in the next four or five years, that always what's what point of what what part of this is broken, what part of this needs to be fixed. I think that verification is definitely one of those things. Well, and I don't think as, I don't think that this is something as devices, that especially as devices get lost. So if there's a way to, for instance, put in like a fingerprint scanner literally on the edge of the device, I'm sure so that it cannot that. it on, not only knows the rumor. It, it, yeah, exactly. Well, and, and, not, only and imagine, it, not only does it know the, the pattern that you grip it with, but can also get some information about uh, about the, the identity from that. That is something that I think Apple would do that would absolutely well, tell people to say, maybe I should, maybe I should make my next phone. I mean, I, phone I think that I think that if you're a government agency or you're a, or or you are a, um, a a company that has some issue with security, it's this isn't just to open up your phone every single time. It's put a tap password in. Give your voice, you know, recognition. Put your thumbprint in and look at the and look at the phone. It's not that any one of those is, is accurate. It's that, and it's not like, and it's not the technology that would be used in this phone would be necessary right now. But imagine being able to vote, for instance, online because you you were able to because you were we able have to. Prove, a long way to do that. No, uh, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, some states will start experimenting with that in the next ten years. And you know, Apple would pull them right into Siri. So say, Alex, I can't quite see you. Can you please turn the phone a bit to the left? Oh, thank you, Alex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why are you frowning, Alex? You're using an iPhone. You Alex, should be yeah, exactly. smiling. Why are you the naked? Real... You know we don't <laughs> allow naked logins. <laughs> I'm a <laughs> <laughs> 
Remember that real iPhone users are smiling all the time. <laughs> right. Smile exactly. all the time when you're using the phone, Alex. Oh. Please enter your toddlike sense of wonder to continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, apparently, uh, the MIT Technology Review says that Apple does have a job listing for writers to enhance Siri's witty personality. That's awesome. And they, they bought that security oh, company for who knows. Yeah, what? they say they're I think I think Apple should just hire half the staff from The Onion and then just, <laughs> and just that would be put them to work. That would be... So they they want yeah, someone. I saw, I, I saw that job listing. I was so close to just saying, I know oh, you're I going to say that they're like, I can't take this job for a lot of reasons, and you can't give <laughs> me this job for a lot of reasons. But let's at least walk through this process to see if maybe there is a way that I can take this job, and you can. You <laughs> it would be so awesome job. to have Andy right. Andy, Siri. you're made you would, for this. You would you you so should do that. You should give up your 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 high paying uh, famous job. <laughs> And at least, at least, uh, you know, moonlight for Apple writing for them. That would be awesome. You are made for it. So, I think, I, I, if it came out a year from now that yes, I did lie to everybody and I have been writing for Siri for the past year, I think they would say, "Okay, Andy, that was naughty. You should have told us, but we totally understand." I, I, I think I think, yeah. I think we should create a petition. I think we should create a petition for Apple that, that we should just tell them they should hire Andy even part time to do this. You know, it, just Andy Nako should we be see contributing. Comic book reference will know he did it. Yeah, <laughs> Here's the uh, listing. They're looking for someone who combines a love for language, wordplay, and conversation. That's Andy. With a demonstrated experience in bringing creative content to life. That's Andy. Within an intense technical environment. That's Andy. You'll, ex for him. you'll need experience in writing character-driven dialogue. Andy. <laughs> a good vocabulary and ideally knowledge of one, more than one language. What's Heck, your second I make language? Up words oftentimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the goal of the hiring will be to, quote, evolve and enrich Siri. Apple is focused on keeping Siri's personality. <laughs> I just got the idea. If, 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 there's a, if there's like a the part of that for the resume, it'll, I'll, I'll have to make it like a dating video. Like, well, Siri, I, I see from your profile that you like good conversationalists. And uh, I talk a lot for a living. And I read a lot of uh, comics, movies. I have a lot of references. Although I try not to be too annoying about making those pop culture references. Uh, I try to listen as much as I talk. I know that you tend to want to listen more than that. But I'll try not to be overbearing and... Anyway, so uh, my ID is four four one four eight one two. You want to go for long romantic walks? If you're uh, if you're like me, <laughs> I like to walk outdoors with my phone by yeah. by parks and uh, and public public spaces. Want to feel I, alive again? I like to look for restaurants. I like to ask about the weather all the time. <laughs> The interesting thing uh, in this whole lineup of Apple's roadmap, again, admittedly, not from Apple, obviously, nothing at all about a Mac Pro. Um, the, he does expect a shift to the Haswell platform for the, uh, the new iMac and the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air. That's the in new Intel uh, chip in the fourth quarter, but no Mac Pro. You know, I had a caller... I don't think they're going to do it. On the weekend, who is a, uh, a film editor, and um, and he's having huge problems with the uh, log and store uh, on uh, the old Final Cut. It's apparently broken the studio. Mm -hmm. And he can't move to Final Cut Pro 10, the app store version, because it's missing things that he needs. And uh, he, like a lot of pros, is becoming more and more frustrated with Apple's uh, uh, approach to the pro market. Oh, I think they are. I mean, I think I, <clears throat> I think what's interesting about it is is that that Final Cut 10 was actually a boom for Apple, Adobe, and Avid. <laughs> yeah, they all. <laughs> there's, there's not. There's very few things that you could do that yeah. everybody wins. And what happened was is that Apple, uh, with Final Cut 10, they massively expanded their market. They made more money than they've made in a long time on Final Cut, um, and so it was a huge boom for them. It was also a boom for Adobe, who saw a lot of people going over to Premiere, and it was a huge boom for Avid, who saw mostly a lot of people coming back to Avid that, that had gone over to Final Cut, and so all of them made money out of the deal. It was quite a, it's quite a, uh, a unique um, anomaly uh, in a in a business decision that all the competitors actually benefited from Apple making that change, and so. Um, but I don't think Apple, I don't think Apple really is worried about. There's not the the market to do high-end film or high-end commercials or a lot of those pieces is not nearly the size of the e-learning or corporate markets or, you know, other, other markets that are there. And so I think that Apple is, is writing going down the direction. It's very frustrating for a lot of people who, who depended on them um, in that area. But I don't think that they're, uh, I don't think they're going back. Um, and I think that you, you just have to decide what part of the market you're in and make a decision about whether, I mean, I have one of my companies works mostly on Premiere 
Um, we do some stuff with Avid, and then we do most of our stuff with Final Cut 10. So that's kind of our, you know, from Pixel Cores, we, we're using a little bit of all of that stuff. And so I don't, um, uh, uh, so anyway, so I, I don't think that it's, <clears throat> I don't, but I don't think Apple's going to go back. I don't have any assumption that they're going to do that. I don't think we're going to see a Mac Pro. Um, I think that, Ever? No, ever. Um, I think it's more Jeez. likely that Apple will stop. I think the real thing that Apple should be thinking about as, as opposed to a, to a Mac Pro is um, to deactivate the, is it the, deactivate looking for the chip on the Mac and just let OS 10 be like, you know, work on Intel, the Intel platform. You know, so for 30 bucks, you can put it on a Not PC. But I think yeah, that, well, the thing is, is that. as the market, as Apple's Mac market becomes less of their business, it becomes easier for them rather than continuing to build all those machines is simply, you know, kind of, uh, you know, unleash their operating system on the other competitors because there's a lot of people and a lot of companies that for 30 bucks a head um, without a whole lot of overhead would would definitely change to a Mac but want to use PC hardware. And there's a lot of pro users who would love to be able to have really big, beefy systems with OS 10 on it. You know, and I think that that is the, uh, I think Apple could, Apple is more likely to do that in my opinion. I know that it doesn't sound like they would do it, but they're more likely to do that than release a Mac Pro at this point, I think. Um, they could put a link to OpenBSD, I think, on their website. <laughs> <laughs> but, as far as no, but I don't think it's, I, I don't think they want OS. Darwin. I don't Go think ahead. they want OS. You know, I, I think, and I'm not saying they should open source, uh, I used to say this, I don't think they should open source um, uh, OS 10, but I think that making it all the, there's a, there's one little, there's, you know, that's how people are doing, you know, crack it is they just stop looking for the chip. And, and so the, if Apple just stopped doing that, um, that by itself, it doesn't mean that they're open sourcing. It doesn't mean that they're supporting the hardware. It just means that they are making it available to a lot of other people with hardware because people who buy Macs, in my opinion, buy them for the hardware, the hardware that when, when I buy an iMac, a 27 inch iMac for the price, I feel like I'm getting the highest performance I'm going to get, um, you know, in a in a in the in the package, the size, the quality, everything else, the, the look, everything that I'm getting there is going is I don't think I'm going to find a PC that's going to do the same thing. So I don't think Apple competes from a hardware perspective anymore on the hardware. Um, they, they I don't think it's, it's, it's a small part of their business. Though. Sorry, like they they didn't do a ca they didn't allow video recording on the iPhone 3G because it was a f it was a few frames lower than what they would expect, and I think that if they released the operating system, I mean there there'd be no driver support. People would be having to write their own stuff, no, and just, it would it would create in their minds an experience that they don't want associated yes, with Apple. Precisely, brand. yeah, but I think they're, they're all, not moving that way. They're moving the exact opposite. But I guess what I would say is that they keep on making their hardware. They could they could literally just not look for that one chip, and not not promote it not support it, not say that it's well, a good not, idea. You know, I haven't seen and a lot suddenly, of prosecutions of Hackintosh. Oh, they're not, they're not prosecuting Hackintosh, you know, but I'm saying that... People just, do Hackintosh. But I'm just you saying... do one now. Yeah, I just think that it would be... I know. It, just, it would expand Apple, a lot yeah, faster if it wasn't. It's not moving towards less control. It's pretty apparent. Well, I just think well, that the... I think OS ten from their perspective is, a, is not part of their future. I don't mean to say it that way, but I mean, it's, you know, I do mean to say it that way. I mean, it, it, it is, it is not, that's not the, you know, they're some amalgamation of iOS and OS ten is somewhere in the distant future. And I think that the current operating system at some point in time becomes something they can, they can make it think, more available. I think it's really interesting that, uh, maybe this is just the way the numbers happen to follow fall. But so if they continue with their one update a year release schedule, we're, we'll be at 10.9 in 2013. Something about the psychology of large round numbers says that 11.0 might be someplace where they're targeting the big change. Uh, if they truly are committed to their historical problem of we're, we're we're okay with inconveniencing a great number of people like Final Cut 10 users, like Apple 2e users, like even Mac, like, like 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 even exactly Apple Maps users, even uh, Mac users who wanted a $500 Macintosh, uh, we're, we're we're willing to go in our own direction and make something incompatible. You would think that it's it's uh, I'm sorry I should I should tamp that down and say it's tempting to think that 11.0 is going to be something rather radical and rather exceptional. Yeah, a couple of quick stories before we wrap it up. The uh, oh, guy who before go ahead. Before we move on, I just wanted to mention it's interesting because we don't have a clear sense of Apple's March event because it's usually iPads and they just put out a new iPad, a new iPad mini. And uh, Ming-Chi has the Apple TV refresh in there, That's which all, is though. interesting because it's already 1080p. There's no, probably not going to be a 4K Apple TV. There's no sign that they've gotten any deals in place with Hollywood to offer more functionality on an Apple TV. So sitting there all by itself in that corner, it's either a press release or it's something more interesting that would warrant an event built well, I around think, it. I, I think the two things that, that Apple TV could do without creating a TV is um, 
A, let the USB port that already exists in there take an, uh, take a, uh, a webcam uh, so that you could do, you know, you could do FaceTime. And two is uh, apps. Like, l actually let people write apps to the Apple TV. If it's not opening a whole app store that's the iOS app store, at least let people actually start creating apps rather than just be a consumer device. But, but that opens up the gaming that, platform and all kinds of other that's things. That's an obvious thing to do, and neither Google nor uh, Apple do that. And I'm starting to think that there's a reason, like... It's like Siri in that they want a channel strategy. If you make a specific yeah. deal with a content partner exactly. and then you open up an SDK, anyone can make it, and that destroys any value that that channel partnership has for you. So they're probably going to keep yeah. like, I think oh, they, here's I think the that HBO app. I think right. there's also a big concern about it being ge too geeky. So I think that that that, that is, um, but I think that that is where you open it up, where suddenly people are I using the TV so, for other things. Smart TVs have apps. And no one uh, uses them. Uh, no one uses them, oh. but they put them in but, there. I mean, I, I, yeah, and that's an even more consumer -y product than Apple TV but I'm a, or Google TV. I, I'm a little geeky. I have apps on my on – I don't even know how to get to them. Like, I just go to my Apple TV, and then I go – I mean, if, if, if Apple started adding apps, if I could start buying iOS apps, it, it, you know, I would use that a lot more than the, the goofy stuff that they put on my Well, I agree. I've wanted apps since day now. one, but I right. – I, I, feel, I feel as though, like, while all these people are behind, all, all these companies are behind locked doors, arguing about what the future is going That's to be. I think, I think, I think people are already moving forward. I mean, I, I just, I just spent a lot get, getting upgrading my my broadband here at the house involved a lot of looking into all the services that my my provider op offers and a lot of other uh, uh, offers, and which which gives me sort of an opportunity to think of all the things that I have piped into my house and whether I really want them or not. And man, I probably was within five minutes of saying, you know what, why don't you just cancel my cable, cancel all the TV. TV channels because uh, so much of what I do really isn't linked towards an actual cable box, an actual broadcast. So it's possible they're trying to work towards locking down content that people don't care about anymore. Right. And they, they should, I mean, they should just, the, the, I think that I'm almost starting to think that the, the company that really uh, integrates and gets what internet TV should be all about is a company where you turn it on and here are icons of all the different services you subscribe to or use. Uh, and it doesn't assume that you want to watch television. It might, maybe your point of, act, of entry is going to be Netflix or the HBO Go app or whatever. So I wish they'd stop arguing and just start, come, come up with that first semi-awful thing. I mean, again, Apple, you've done it before. You've released Maps. Uh, that at least gets that product <laughs> well outfit out there and gets the discussion going and, oh, and gets I look, the next, next iteration out there. I think one of the big things going for us with uh, Apple losing some of its market share and, and um, getting pressed a little bit harder by its competitors is that Apple might need to get more aggressive, you know, and, and actually um, do some stuff that's a little bit more out there. And right now, I think sometimes they're, they're dragging their feet. It's not just their competitors. It's their competitors who used to be their service provider and their manufacturer. So, right. I mean, it, it puts them in a very difficult position. But uh, like right now, I, I did cancel my cable, and I use the Canadian network apps, CTV Global, City TV apps. CTV app will airplay, but not over a regular airplay. You have to do airplay mirroring, and the City TV app won't do it because of contract deals. And it creates a very fragmented experience. Um, and I think if we can get movement on those things, and you kind of circumvent the whole problem about the box is that your content is just where you are and you put it where you want it to be but the, the people the people who want the traditional can, channel lineup and this is another problem they're starting to age out of the system mm -hmm. you when you get when you, we get these people who are now who, who never really knew tv that way who are now close to being that generation that is now getting their own apartments getting their real jobs uh getting the job market with real degrees and then soon there'll be the people who are starting to buy the houses uh, the houses now my kids so my my kids don't know, uh, they don't know what's on where, they don't know when it happened, they don't, I mean, they don't even know what, they don't know what, they don't connect to networks anymore, and they just connect you know to the shows that they're is. watching. It's funny, I, I'm old and I don't know when it, what, what, what's I, where I, either. I rarely know it either, I yeah. mean, it's, it's, so I mean, I think that we're, we're a little, we're a little bit of a, a we're unique the, situation. Yeah, but, we're the early adopters. But I think that, that, that there is that, that generation under 25 that is yeah. just totally disconnected from that. We're going to take a break. Come back with your picks of the week, gentlemen. Prepare your picks. Woot. Woot. But first, I want to show you this. My pick. It's, what is that? The little box, that little tiny box. It's got to tell you, it's got a, a Ethernet port on one side. It's got a USB port, power supply. That is the Lantronics X-Print server. And that thing going to change your life. If you've ever tried to print from an iPhone or an iPad, mm -hmm. you know that if you have one of those air print devices in there, I think they're all from HP. I don't think, I think that's the only ones that support air print. I don't know uh, what the latest is, but you know, you otherwise you have to get an app, you have to set it up. It's really complicated. Wouldn't it be nice if you could take a printer, even a USB printer that's not on the network, and print to it easily, simply from an iPhone or an iPad? Oh, that's awesome. This is what this does. It could take any USB printer, make it a network printer, and... It also auto-discovers all the network printers on the network, makes them available and easy to access from your iOS. 
You can it solves the frustration trying to print from an iPad or an iPhone. You go right from the native menu. You don't have to buy any apps or install any software. You don't even have to configure this thing. You just plug it in. It works with more than 4,000 top brand printers. Uh, you're printing within seconds. One X print server will support as many as eight USB printers uh, and many uh, network printers, depending on the device you get, all over the network. It's a great way to share USB printers with other users on the network as well, not just iOS devices. So this is the home edition. It supports 99, it's 99 bucks and supports eight printers and up to two network printers for any home Eight USB printers, two network printers. I don't think you got more than that. But if you do, if you're you're an office or a, a bigger network, for 199, you can get the Office Edition, which has unlimited network printers, eight USB printers, and includes some uh, network admin features like Active Directory support. This is an amazing deal. If you compare it with anything else on the market, you will. And I keep getting emails and tweets from people who've used it and say this was so easy. I love it. Visit xprintserver.com/twit for more information. When you use the offer code TWIT, you'll get free shipping on your order. The X-Print server from Lantronics, xprintserver.com slash TWIT. Don't forget to use the offer code TWIT when you check out to save on uh, shipping. This is such a cool device. Fantastic. You've used it? Yeah. And the th well, I have given it to people who are much less technically astute than me, and they have made it work just very simply. There's nothing to do. Yeah. Yep. There's no install, nothing to install, nothing. Yeah, somebody said, why don't they do a parallel port version? <laughs> <laughs> I have serial, serial, baby. There are still some people out there with parallel port printers. Hello, I... Epson. How many stop bits do I need for the... <laughs> remember that? I can't, to... I can't find the dip switches oh, on my inkjet God. printer. I remember those days. <laughs> Andy Anako, your pick of the week, my friend. Uh, my pick of the week, especially since we've been talking about uh, iPad Mini, is a product from a company that I've recommended in the past, different things. Uh, the X-Mount, the Ram Mount X-Grip. Yes, it Whoa. does look like an X-Wing fighter. Uh, mini tablet holder. Uh, it's part of the uh, X -mount, RAM mount system. It's re I, I love this mounting system for just about everything because instead of selling you just like here is a thing, a plastic thing in a box for uh, car mounting your or car mounting or window mounting or whatever mounting your phone, they will they they'll sell you a package or you can just buy the suction cuppy thing for putting it on the on the window or just the army bit because you want maybe an arm that's longer than this uh, or or just to, and then when you uh, switch from one phone to another. You don't have to replace everything you have in your car. You just have to replace the thing that actually holds the thing. So this is their new, like, X-Grip system that will hold pretty much any large tablet. Let me see if I can one-hand it. You just spread the arms like this, put it inside. I'm trying to one-hand this. There we go. And then, believe it or not, once you let go, it actually holds it really, really well. Thank God it didn't fall. Look at that. I've never done that before. Yeah. And, and, and again, the cool thing about that is that when you're not using it for, if you were ever to switch to a different sort of thing, you can now use that for your, also your Samsung Galaxy. Um, I don't have my, there you go. Uh, or if you, let's say that you are, you took this with you because uh, you're going on vacation. You're going on vacation and you're going to be in a rental car uh, and you just wanted that just for like your in-car navigation. But hey, now you're on the plane and you want like a stand for your for your Kindle. This will work with your Kindle. This will work with anything that's of a certain uh, size. They make a flavor of this same thing that is phone sized. Uh, and so that will work with like your Samsung phone and then it will work with your iPhone 4 and you can switch from one thing to another to another. But like it's again, it's a clever design that works with just about anything. Uh, but the other selling point is that Again, other than these really cheaply made plastic things that you get that will work with one model of phone, but then as soon as you upgrade a year later, you've got to buy an entirely other thing and replace everything. With this one, it's really made extremely well. Uh, these are they, they make mounting kits for like law enforcement, for military, for all kinds of things. Not only that, but again, you can just replace the parts that you need. Uh, I've got so many bits and bobs ever since I bought my first RAM mount thing three years ago uh, that like whenever I'm shooting video inside the car, I take the head off of this, I put in a camera mount, and now it's a window camera mount. Uh, I've got a, I've got uh, different solutions for so many different things that it's just not funny. Uh, but this uh, this part, the uh, X mount part, is about thirty bucks. If you want to put together this entire thing, I think this would probably cost you about forty or fifty because they will sell this as a package or as independent things. But again, uh, can't can't recommend Ram mount uh, how, uh, highly enough. It's really price competitive with everything else, and it's built way better than anything else you're going to find on the market. It's RamMount.com, the X grip. 
and it's spring loaded, so it'll adjust. Spring loaded again. It's, you you don't you wouldn't think that it's actually going to hold on Look to this that. thing, but it really does grip it tightly. I took it. Uh, this is the first time that I actually like was driving around with like a mini tablet, <laughs> a, a, a mini tablet like locked into my car uh, car dashboard. And man, it is a trip. It is a scene, man, to have like this like floating inside like your peripheral vision, <laughs> As, especially when you're watching Lord of the Rings while bobbing down I-95. Now that was that was adventurous. Uh, learning but, about football, I'll drive. Exactly, learning learning, making sure that I, I I know all about the traffic type I'm about to create by crashing. Uh, but yeah, it, it it's it's incredibly solid. This does not move at all. Uh, and you just and when it, when it comes time to leave your car, you just do this and it's out. That's it. You don't have to click it into anything. You don't have to trap anything else. The, the, the points are all coated in rubber, so you're not going to scratch your beautiful adenized uh, aluminum finish. They really did this correctly. It's got a better grip than Kelly Clarkson at the inauguration. Oh, <laughs> nice. smack. Did you see that? <laughs> didn't see it. <laughs> didn't see Dad, it. Did you not see my screen? Are you busy? Ed. Sorry. <laughs> there are a couple of things that came out of the inauguration. And uh, and somebody had a caption contest, and uh, my favorite was, "Hey, nice grip there, lady." <laughs> <laughs> you saw, uh, you saw. Uh, there's another uh, another one, Michelle Obama and uh, John Boehner. Did you see that one? No. <laughs> yes, the animated GIF. Of yeah, the it's an animated GIF. Viral. Yeah, yeah uh, I I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what really happened, but um, it's a great animated GIF. Let me see if I can. Uh, I can find one that's actually animated. Did you uh, see the photo of, of everyone texting? It was probably some down. Oh yeah, there's texts everywhere. Well, no, 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 no. There was there was a, there was one shot that someone Where shot down. Got their, their phones well, out. Literally, Michelle Obama, uh, Barack Obama, their kids, everyone are all <laughs> like at the inter inauguration. They're all like heads down in, in their uh, in their respective mobile device. Uh, let's see. I think it's from Atlanta. Well, so, you know, it's 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 a big deal. If I were being sworn in as the president, I'd probably be texting my friends to let them know how cool the day it was. Yeah, sure. In case they hadn't heard, I probably would have told them before that. Okay, that's a good point. You just, you know, there's nothing, you know, uh, nothing private. There's nothing private. It's a humble brag. It's, yeah, yeah, here you go. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> this is not as good. This is not as good uh, as the one I've seen. Let me see if I can see it on Tumblr. Um, we don't know what, uh, what uh, President Obama was saying to... Uh, to John Boehner, uh, but it was clear that here we go, here we go. Here's the eye roll. Yeah. Wait a minute. No, in a minute. In a minute. Hold it. Wait. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we don't really know what's going on, but uh... well, we can, we can probably say it was Boehner. <laughs> the first eye roll. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. She has a uh, she has a Twitter it's account now, right? Austin Flintus. Powers, because that's probably that's that's really played out, and that would that would get an eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, behave, Ms. First oh, Lady. Oh, behave, uh, Renee Ritchie. Your pick of the week. My pick of the week is a Mac app. It's called Napkin, and it's for very quick annotation of images. It's put together by Chris Parrish, who used to be at Adobe and then was at Rogue Cheap, Thomas Unterberger, who did the visual design for screens, which I really liked, and Guy English, who I have to disclose is a friend of mine, but I think this app is really good in spite of that. And he did video games and he did uh, Tapulous and a bunch of other stuff oh, since then. All right. And they they made, um, basically it's an app, you just drag images into it, you can quickly do callouts, quickly do arrows, quickly add shapes. And the goal was to make a Mac app that works almost like an iOS app. There's almost no intermediation. You just quickly gesture on a shape and it's there. You gesture out an arrow oh, I like this. and it's there. You drop a call out. Um, it is incredibly fast. We have switched to doing all our how to, our how to's on iMore using Napkin. Uh, now it's a it's close to a forty dollar app, but at a certain point, your time is worth way more than your money. And this is so fast at getting the kind of stuff done that we do. Uh, also, developers are using it to set to submit bugs or to mock up design charts. It's uh, one of the best Mac apps I've used in a long time. Just the way it's coded, the way it works, and the work that it lets me do with it. So if you would, if you work in development, if you work in design, if you work in any sort of technical documentation and just want to get stuff done quickly, you can even, once you've done a drawing there, you just drag the little icon in the top right and you can drag it right into Photoshop, right into a file, right into an email, and it packages the image for you. 
Uh, it's non-destructive. You can do all sorts of really cool things. And if you just draw a circle, Leo, with your mouse, um, you'll see it'll automatically, it, it's very good at knowing what you want to do uh, and just figuring it out. Once you put an arrow, you move stuff, the arrow follows with you. And how would you it's, compare this to like Sketch? Uh, it is what Sketch should have been. Um, wow. It's a 1.0 product, though. So, I mean, it's not feature complete yet. They're still working on it. They're doing mm -hmm. a lot of things. But what it does, basically, it does right. And, for example, you draw a circle. You decide you want a rectangle or a round rect instead. You don't have to delete anything because programmatically they're the same. You just change the the, uh, the border attribute. It becomes a square, a rectangle, so a round rect. So there's some sort of vector uh, vector drawing. And what is the format of that it's, they're sharing it out in? I mean, You can save it as an actual napkin file, but if you drag it out, it's just a ping file. It's a PNG you can do with. It's animated uh, it, or? Uh, uh, it's not animated. It's, not it's, animated. it's, it's okay. 2D now. It's really for marking up. It's for something, you know, you might have drawn out a, brought out Adobe um the, the, P, the PDF version of Adobe and play Acrobat at one point to do. Right. And you no longer need something that heavy. And it's super lightweight, super fast. Uh, and again, if you just if you get sent a drawing, you're like, no, I don't want this area. I want that area or I want this color. You could call that out really quickly, get it in, get it out, and you're back at work. And it's it, uh, it's in the uh, App Store. It's yep. uh, called Napkin. Yes. And uh, in the desktop App Store, it's a uh, Mac yes. app. It looks uh, like it's made for the iPad, so I'm really hoping they get around to an iPad be version. It's so cool to have this for the iPad. They started it before the iPad was actually announced, and wow. the idea was, why can't we have big screen apps that work the way iPhone apps did? And then, you know, after they were developing it, Apple announced an iPad. So yeah. it's easy to see that translation. Yeah. Well, I just bought it. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna. I'm definitely gonna get it. I, I um, right now I use uh, Skitch all the time. Yeah. You know, like that's like Sketch that's my, is similar. It's sim it's similar. I think this one does looks like it has more features. The nice thing about Sketch is it saves it automatically to Evernote now because Evernote and this you just which I never use, but I just, don't have to pick a text tool. Yeah. It just works. Right, right. This is cool. It's a little bit like OmniGraffle a little bit too. A little bit of everything. It's a tool that they made for a job that they're doing, and they use oh, it all funny. the time. And that's right. usually the best. Yeah, that's the best. Of a good app. Yeah. So it's like their so it's like their version of Keynote. <laughs> where this is stuff that they had to make sure the boss was using every single day. So, right. oh man, does that make sure it gets done? It gets done well very, very quickly. And the Damn, Apple the developer fixations. community is <laughs> the Apple developer community is very small, and they tend to know each other. So, if there's anything wrong with the developer tool, you hear about it very quickly. <laughs> and finally, Alex Lindsay, your pick of the week, my friend. So I have I have one pick from myself and then one from my wife actually. Oh, all right. sure. She's, um, so the uh, the one that I'm going to pick is a lot of people are. Um, take a lot more photos with their iPhone. Um, yes. And if you're looking for kind of a, a really quick uh, guide to um, shooting with your iPhone using the different hardware and software, actually a Pixel Core member put together a book that's in the, that is now in, uh, it's an iBook um, and it's called How to Create Amazing iPhone Photographs. Oh. And it's $3. <laughs> so, Sounds good. So it's, you know, and this is, I, I, I really want to see part of it is it's a great book. I mean, he just really kind of geeks out. So this is Mike, Michael Sweeney and um, he kind of geeks out on different pieces of hardware and of course all of that's changing constantly but um he, he kind of gives you some ideas about how to how to shoot i mean he's got the, the cover is this uh, moon shot that i still can't believe was shot with an iphone so um but uh anyway the but all the photographs of course are, on, are shot with an iphone and he talks about different hardware appliances and software appliances and again for three bucks, if you're just trying to get ahead and see all the things that you can do, this is an easy, easy buy. So, um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's great little, I, uh, um, and, and what I'm hoping for, I guess, uh, is I, I, I want to see more books like this. In fact, I'm thinking of creating a couple books like this where they're really quick. They're easy. It's a hundred pages. It's right. in an iBook format and you can, um, uh, you know, for $3. I mean, I think that is the future for a lot of book selling. And, um, and I definitely, uh, I think people, and there's some, you know, there's video, there's some interactive materials, there's all kinds of little bits and pieces in there. So definitely check it out. Um, you know, as I said, it's a cost of a coffee um, to learn more about how to take good pictures with your, uh, with your iPhone. And a lot of us, of course, if you're listening to the show, uh, probably want to know more about that. So how to create amazing iPhone photographs by Michael Sweeney. And then my, my wife's pick, my wife doesn't get very many apps. So when she gets an app that says she really likes, and she says she really likes it, I think there's some, some of our audience that would like to know. So she, my wife loves, it's called grocery IQ. Have you guys? Oh yeah. I use that. I've used that for years. Yeah, so. It's cross platform too, which is great. So you can keep your grocery lists on any device, right. computer, tablet and phone exactly and my and my wife uh you know she was Sinks just up. really trying to figure out what she can use on her uh on her iphone um that would let her you know while she's thinking about it 
write something down, and then also very quickly and easily be able to, you know, when, she, when she's already, when she's at the grocery store, the big problem with a lot of the lists is, A, they were too hard to create, or B, they just didn't, they, they weren't really good at feedback, like while you're at the store clicking on them, yeah. and it didn't break them into the sections. So what's really nice also is this breaks it into sections. So when you put something in, it, it categorizes all the, the dairy products with the dairy products and all the other pieces so that you know when and you're you in that section. And you can even tell it the layout of the store so right. that it knows, oh, you're uh you're at Petaluma Market. Well, here's where the aisle, here's what's in these aisles. It's yeah, really so great. Really, really, really great. Um, anyway, so it's called Grocery IQ, and um, and it's it's uh, approved by my wife, which is uh, which is very. Important. I wish it had Siri integration because you know yeah. I still now make my lists because of Siri and reminders. Right. Because I could just talk to it, and if that has Siri integration, that would be awesome. Perfect. Apple, you gotta open this API or something. Yes. Let developers use it. Yes. Uh, I have a couple of picks, but I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you my uh, my pick, and I can't really show it to you, but it is the new iMac. I've had it now for a week. Very fast. I got the Fusion Drive. Is it, no, the, is, this the, is this the 27? Yeah, 27 mm -hmm. skinny. So <laughs> it's, it's only skinny if you look at it right at the right angle. But, 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 as soon as you turn it, you see the bulge. But you, it still is like an optical illusion. No matter, you, you get yeah. pretty far around before you well, go, wow, it's It's also much lighter. We yeah. noticed immediately. It's much lighter. It really does feel like a whole different thing. And it is super fast, noticeably mm -hmm. faster even than the last year iMac that I had. I had a late model iMac. And oh, here the, it comes. the uh, Oh, here it comes. This is, it's so light that uh, John just brought it right over. The terabyte drive in it. Um, iMac Steward. <laughs> iMac Steward, bring me the iMac. So you see how thin it is. It's one of those things just like the, the uh, MacBook Air where you've got a thin bezel and then it bulges in the middle. The bulge is still not as thick as, an I, as the older iMac. Yeah. And it's, it's appreciably thinner. And it makes the screen look really good because the screen just seems to be this little piece of glass floating in place also that that fusion drive you know that's the drive where it's two drives a ssd right i think 160 gig ssd and, and then a spinning three terabyte drive noticeably fast i actually have done some uh, benchmark tests uh on it and of course it, what it's hard to benchmark test because it gets faster so it's a little deceptive what happens is the uh is is mountain it's watching lion, what you're lion doing. watches what you're doing and puts the uh, drives you access most often uh, the files you access most often on the solid state drive. It's not, it's not, you know, it, it's constantly changing. So I do have a, a, a benchmark that I did with the Blackmagic speed test. And what I'll do is I'll compare this. This is the other world computing Mercury SSD that I have on the right that I have in my MacBook Air. Mm -hmm. uh, Mac, I'm sorry, in the, uh, the Retina. So 504 megabytes a second, megabytes, not bits, second read, 308 megabytes a second right. That's a that's a fast SSD. <laughs> but if you go over and you look at now, this is the Fusion three terabytes. It's two. It's very close. Two hundred eighty six four megabytes per second. And here's so my question: Is how long will it do that? If it's a really big file, will it run out? These are five gig files. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. using the five gig on the Blackmagic speed test. And furthermore, uh, it got better as I kept reading and writing that file. Of course, it sped up because it moved it to the SSD. Right. So this is without reading and writing it for too long, and mm -hmm. it got fa even faster. But three hundred eighty three. Megabytes a second read compared to 504, so it's about 20% mm -hmm. less. And 286 megabytes per second write compared to 308. Still much faster than a traditional spinning drive. Uh, really recommend it. I, I have to say this new iMac well, and, and, but is it's, great. It's looking at these new iMacs um, that has me not think that we're not going to get another um, it's good enough. Mac Pro. Because, well, once you start uh, accessorizing with Thunderbolt yeah. um, you know, and adding a lot of the things that you would normally have with a Mac Pro, I think that you end up solving 90% of the problems that people have. Um, now, some people are saying did you, uh, in, in the chat room that uh, Boot Camp is not working on the Fusion drives. Do you know anything well, about that? Uh, Windows does not understand a Fusion drive. Right. It's confused. Um uh, and so this is in the, it, certainly the optimizations are built into into OS 10. Right. Does I don't know. I haven't tried putting Boot Camp on there. Will Boot Camp not work? I think it's I think from in point of view of the hardware, it would still look like a single drive. Right. Unless I'm completely mistaken. That's what people were saying on in the chat room. I haven't tried. I it. haven't tried it. Let but me, yeah, I, I think me, that uh, it's. Um, you know, um, I. <laughs> I'm not rushing to install Windows 8 on this. <laughs> to be right. honest, to be perfectly right. frank. Uh, but I guess I should try it. Um, uh, touchscreen is worthless, Leo. Yeah, that's right. You need a touchscreen. So um, Apple highlighted the issue on both its iMac configuration and Fusion Drive explanation page. Boot Camp Assistant is not supported at this time on three terabyte configurations at this time. Right. So you do so have to use parallels or a VMware Fusion or 
right. uh, one box to uh, run Windows on it. That's not the end of the world, as far as I'm concerned. No, it's great. I, and we got the 21 inch for my uh, my parents in law, and they for Christmas. And they now that it. doesn't have the Fusion, I don't think. No. So I don't think you have to worry uh, about that. No, it's great. Uh, that's interesting. That I didn't realize you can't use Boot Camp on it. Uh, it's, it's just, I mean, for whatever percentage you know needs and to uh, yet. I'll get that one guy back yeah, using Boot Camp soon. Well. If you, uh, if you really using, need to run Windows in native mode on one of the new iMac, don't get the Fusion Drive. Right, right. Absolutely. If that's really where you're, the direction you're going. But if you're running it as a native Mac, it it's, is fast. It's awesome. Yeah. It is fast. Yeah. And to get three terabytes is, at that kind of speed is really great. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm finally, I have a desktop still sitting in my, in my house, and I'm finally looking at it going, you know, I don't really want to pay for that heating bill it is the heater actually for yeah. the room yeah. is my is my uh is my mac and so i'm thinking of getting getting it out of the out of the office <laughs> i've been so. holding out for the the new mac pro but when you parse tim cook's words carefully he says that i'll have something for pro users not necessarily oh you know, he doesn't say i'll thing. have a new mac pro in 2013 no, he, he says, says something so for pro waiting users. for a new mac pro it's something like we'll have something for you uh, next year uh, but it's not as specific as, <laughs> yeah. so now i'll, I'll give you a, give you a sneak preview and, right here it's one of these yeah. five and, and and you know someone was asking in the in the in the chat room you know uh, about Mac Minis versus wh wh whether you need a Mac Mini or or, a, or an iMac and and I think that for most people I would say an iMac is a better solution just because it's all in one and you don't have to think about it the advantage of the Mac we have about we have a lot of both <laughs> um, Mac Minis are great because you 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 separate the Mac Mini from the monitor so you can have a whole bunch of Mac Minis stacked up somewhere and a whole bunch of monitors somewhere else I mean that's that's really right. the time we get it but otherwise it's I would a get specialized it. it's very specialized it's, it's a server more so, or being able to have again have them all in one place and have my monitors in another um, uh, but I think that for the most part I think that the the 27 and 21 are the best computers that Apple has made I want desktop computers and they're Ooh. selling really well apparently yeah <laughs> evidently it's hard to get them <laughs> what really yeah, it's yeah. The, the the 21 inch now is now up to two or three weeks rather than really? seven or ten days. Oh, yeah. I feel lucky. So it's slowing down. Again. I ordered this uh, a couple of months ago, but I'm happy I did. Yeah, I and wish I had. It's, it's replaced the other Mac. What I'm happened jealous. to the old Mac? It's now a Skype machine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's absorbed. Sad. It's absorbed into the Borg. It's the doorman. Renee Ritchie is at imore.com, a great website. You must visit imore.com. He joins us every week from Montreal. Hope you're staying warm this winter, Renee. It's, it's been up and down, Leo. It gets warm long enough to entice us out of our homes and then freezes us solid again. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, thanks to Alex Lindsay. Appreciate your time. It's good to be here. Good to see you. Um, as a, a quick reminder, um, number one is I, I uh, I've been posting a bunch of stuff about Mac on the on my G Plus page. So if you search G Plus, you'll find me there. And then also we have a G Plus community for Mac Break. Yes. So just as a for Mac and Break you're Weekly, really, really running that. So I think yeah, I'm kind of I've kind of put it together. Um, yeah. And so there's there's eight or nine hundred people already already in the community, but we'd love to have you. So if you're listening to the show, go to the G Plus communities and uh, search for Mac Break Weekly. And uh, and it's it's I've added a whole bunch of little bits and pieces. And we had this great thing where we asked people to start. I I, I shared my um my home screen from my iPhone. And, and well, suddenly there was idea. Yeah. suddenly there's a whole slew of them, all of people, of people What's, sharing them, and I just yeah. think it's very interesting. How do you, you know, so that? so I'm, I, you know, I have to admit that I'm playing a little bit in the you know um, social experiment of what can we do with that community. So we're just getting started, and um, but uh, we hope that more people uh, more people jump into the to the G plus community. Yeah, I'm the, the community is more just people great. to be honest. Well, uh, we haven't talked about it at all. I don't. I think it's the first time we right. talked about it on the show. So all Mac all the time. Mac Break Weekly. Uh, Alex Lindsay is a moderator. I think I am as well. Yeah, you are. Uh, and uh, I will start spending more time uh, in there. Actually, we 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 wanted to think. We were thinking about. You were thinking about maybe using this for stories. Or yeah. So I, I, like one that. of the things I was thinking is in the news. You know, you could you could give us a hand by posting some of the stories. What should that we you're, be talking about next week? Yeah. Right. So put it in the news. Maybe. And I'm going to try to start putting more stuff in the news as well so that you you kind of see the things that we're thinking about as far as news for the next Maybe week we'll do that on uh, monday's uh, chad is uh, put our rundown our, our preliminary rundown on monday into uh, and let people talk about and let and and get your input right. uh, uh, yeah we could do that yeah i finished the doc on monday night so i could yeah. do that and then one of the things I'm looking at doing is also Pasted like it. tips and tricks and, and so on and so forth that we might incorporate into the show at some point in time and talk about, you know, some of the things, the apps that we should be thinking about when we're trying to think about what these, um, uh, you know, what, you know, you can give us guides on things that we might want to recommend. Um, so it's a great way for you to kind of have a two-way communication. There's a lot of people that are, um, it's a pretty active group. It is. It's great. Yeah. So it's, um, and I, I'm really, I think that the, you know, these communities are going to build up. 
<laughs> uh, to me, this, now. this revitalized my interest in uh, Google+. Plus. I think the communities are a great feature. And i got to point out that MacBreak Weekly uh, has, uh, what did you, you say, 900 members in it? I think 870. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, this week in Google has more than 3,000, so we got to get to work. Yes. Get more people so, in so there. So join have your friends join? It's not that we're we're not. It's not that we're competitive or anything, but participate. When can we and get deliver? It did start working, Leo. Started working right after the show last week for Google Plus. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. That's great. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Alex, for being here. Will we see you next week? Yes. Great, Mr. Uh, Andy Anako, Chicago Sun Times, last day as an eight-bit character, <laughs> <laughs> or or at least the the last day that we can not blame Skype or some other provider. <laughs> <laughs> Next, next week, if there are problems, I'm, I can once again start cursing at Skype. Uh, just an update for those of you watching live. There was a lot of chatter during the show. Uh, Sarah Lane was in a car accident. She was in Doyle Drive uh, heading. Uh, I pres Was she here for TNT? She was. She was. So she was heading home. She said the, in her Twitter there were huge buckets of water gushing from the ceiling. She jammed on her brakes and was rear-ended and slammed into the wall. Her car was totaled. She's on her way to the emergency room, but she's tweeting. So we know she's conscious. I think she's conscious, unless she's unconsciously tweeting. Right. It's no, a new I, feature. We'll but I, I sent her a note saying, you don't have to answer this, uh, but let us know if you need anything, and we will certainly uh, keep you up to date. And I know I, there's so many people who uh, adore Sarah, including myself, so we will absolutely keep an eye on uh, Sarah and let you know how she's doing. Um, she's well enough to, to, to tweet, anyway. Um, <laughs> usually, I, if it's a life-threatening injury, people, don't, I find, don't, don't, don't Twitter about it. But I might be wrong. I think we're moving into a new age. Where when I have my heart attack, I'm going to tweet it. <laughs> I have a, yes. I it's, it's a, can't it's, move it's my left arm. a good way arm. to stay away, for, stay ahead of the story. <laughs> Breaking news. Chad Johnson. Oh, and I, I wanted to mention that we have a new YouTube channel. Um, oh, thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Um, you can head on over to uh, YouTube.com slash MacBreak. And uh, this is where our new uh, episodes will be uploaded. So if... Uh, it used to be go to the it used to upload to the youtube.com slash twit channel that is being repurposed um, so if you would like to go on over to youtube.com slash macbreak weekly and subscribe to that channel and you'll only get macbreak weekly yeah. videos not by the way macbreak but macbreak weekly very important there is no macbreak um, but you should, you should run out and get it uh, you can still go to youtube.com slash twit and find uh, our promos specials things like that um, and what you'll also find on the uh, right-hand side of the screen is a list of each show's direct YouTube link. That way, uh, if you can't remember it, and sometimes it's not obvious, you'll be able to see uh, the, the YouTube channel. We did this because this way you can subscribe more granularly to the shows that you want to get notifications about. Mm -hmm. But we are going to work on uh, returning uh, a all-in-one feed. We had one on our website, which was accidentally uh, disabled. We're going to put that back. It may already have it, it back. It's, yeah. It, it happened within hours of us talking about it last Okay. Time. And then uh, we're also working on a unified uh, YouTube feed for the crazy ones. Here's mm -hmm. the crazy ones who want every single show. Um, so if I go to uh, twit.tv slash, slash feeds slash node slash feed, I, yeah. will, I will now once again uh, get a uh, all... All feed, feed. All shows, feed. Good. Thank you for getting that back. We wouldn't want to lose that. Yep. Launch my Google Reader. That's good. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We do the show 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday on twit.tv. That's 1900 UTC. If you want to watch live, we'd love it. Because you can see we interact with the chat room, whether we want to or not. <laughs> <laughs> they interact with us. Uh, but we also uh, have on-demand versions uh, available after the fact, both audio and video at twit.tv slash mbw for Mac Break Weekly. Uh, and, of course, wherever you get iTunes, uh, wherever you get podcasts, iTunes, and Zoom, and all of that, those other places. I throw in Zoom, just, just throw them a bone. <laughs> throw me a freaking bone. <laughs> it's actually uh, cheaper to throw them a Zoom. All yes. pre-users? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Now get back to work. Break time is over.